Amen. Amen. I just want to first of all just say good morning to you all. Good morning. And I'm actually going to be opening us up in prayer today. And before I do so, I just want to say, or I want you to actually say this with me. Let's do it this way. I want you to just say the words. If you're wherever you are, no matter where you are right now, I just want you to be able to close your eyes and just say the words. And it's just two words simply in me. Amen. I want you to say the words in me, right? I just want you to say the words aloud or just say it in a very profound way in your heart. But I want you to say the words in me. If you can write it in the chat, write it in the chat. But I want those two words to resonate deep within you right now. And those two words are in me. Before closing my eyes last night, God kept saying those two words in my ears. And those two words were in me. I had no idea what he was taking me to or what it was referring to but I know for sure he wanted me to highlight that at the very beginning of this call God really wants to do a job in you 
in you. He wants to do a job in each and every one of us here today. And it's like the 1st of October, the chapters of September have gone. And we're about to prepare for shifts. And this is what this call is about. If you're on this call, if you are connected or engaged in this meeting, it's not the fact that you're here by coincidence. You've been predestined to actually be here on this call and you're on this call for a reason because God wants to do a shift or he wants to encourage you in your shift or he actually wants to even give you some tools and all sorts in order to prepare you for shifts that are to come, amen. You're not here by accident. But first, what God is saying aloud is that he wants to do a job on the inside. He wants to do a job in you. So I want us to say those two words again, all right? Let's just repeat those two words, in me. Yes, Lord, do a job in me. If you want to write it aloud just so it resonates, just write it. But just say it with the most deepest effort, in me. There is, there's no such thing as being blessed outwardly, but being, let's say, barren inwardly. And I'm going to take my time to say that again. There's no such thing as, let's say, being blessed or just being so like literally everything goes outwardly. But then inwardly, you're barren. There ain't no such thing. That's a lie. And I just want to make sure that is clear that is a lie, because we know that the Bible says that you're, you prosper as your soul prospers. There's no way in which you can just be there and things come into you left, right, corner, center. And it's like, wow, but inwardly you're crying, inwardly you're barren. There ain't no such thing. So let's even deal with that aspect here today, amen? But for an actual shift to take place, it must take place inwardly before it manifests outwardly. It has to take place inwardly. Even the most sudden of shifts, even the ones where you wake up and you just realize, boom, you're in a set. It has to take place inwardly first before it takes place outwardly. And it most definitely would have taken place in the spirit before it even shows up naturally. Amen. For it to take place, though, inwardly, God needs one thing and he needs one thing only. And he needs to be the owner of your heart. There's going to be a lot that's going to be spoken today. And many of it's going to be literally probably allowing you to reflect and self, self-analyze certain things that are going on in your life. Because sometimes we're just on autopilot or we're just running around you know whatever you want to call it 100 miles per hour but God wants us to pause and he wants to just say really just allowed that in order for him to be able to do a job on the inside he needs to be able to own your heart and it's something that you have to give to him it's something that you have to allow him in it's something that you need to surrender the bible says very clearly Create in me, create in me a clean heart. The Bible says that those that are pure in heart, they're the ones that shall see God. Some of these scriptures we know. But I pray that as I'm saying them aloud, that you're hearing it in a very different way this morning. Create in me a clean heart. Those that are pure keyword pure in heart they shall see god so before we go into the let's say the meat of the meeting and we go into all the different prayer points i just want you to just focus on where you are where you are with god and i, I just want to invite each and every one of you that's on this call to just just give Jesus your heart, man. Or just, if it's the case that you, you know, like, okay, I've given Jesus my heart already. I want you to open your heart then fully to God this morning. This is a morning prayer meeting. Open your heart fully to him. Forget how it was you slept last night or whatever it is, but you are here. 
you are here and you are present. And I don't want it to be that you're just present here, let's say embody, but I want you to be fully present to what it is that God wants you to receive on this call. No time in God is wasted. There is something that he wants to deposit on the inside of you, but you need to open up your heart fully and you need to just let him in. You might be someone that says, well, you know what? I've already done that. I've already given God my heart. I've already done that. You know what I mean? Because sometimes, you know, I mean, there's always that contradiction. Someone says something, it's like you're like, you might be deep inwardly saying you've already done that. And I'm just going to say to you, if you're someone that is feeling that way or saying that, then you know what? Allow God to polish. Allow God to polish your heart. You know, when you actually have a pair of shoes and yeah, you can have some shoes that are clean, but when you put a polish on those shoes, hey, those shoes look different and they shine. So allow God to polish your heart. Or if you're someone on here for the first time, you've not really had that opportunity to really give him your heart, give him your heart. But the main thing, let's open our heart fully to him. So that therefore we can receive what it is that he wants to say unto us on the inside. So that we can actually take in everything that is spoken in the knowing that it's not man, but it's his word. And in the knowing that he wants to be able to commune with you this morning. Amen. So with just that, though, I'm just going to really just. I'm going to open in prayer, but I'm also going to invite those of you that want to or can just to be able to come with me and just join me in this prayer, wherever you are. Just feel free to come with me to join. If not, I'm just going to just open up in prayer so we can just literally allow God to just stir us up from where we are because we want him to invade. We want him to invade where we are right now. There ain't nothing like the presence of God. And there ain't nothing like just being able to just hear divinely what it is that he wants for our lives, but we need to let him in. Amen. Let's pray. Let's just magnify Jesus. In Jesus name. Amen. I know it's morning, but let's just raise our voice on high to the one that is deserving of it all. In Jesus name. Amen. Almighty God. We are all here, my Father God, before you. In the knowing, my Father God, that you are my Father God, the Alpha. You are the Alpha and you are the Omega. You are the Lily of the Valley, my Father. My God, you are Father, O Lord, the Lord of Lords. You are the King of Kings. You are the Jehovah Jireh, my Father. In fact, you are the self-existing God. You are the Lord of all. We are Honor you, my father. You are my father, God. Worthy, my father, God, to be magnified, Jesus. We recognize you and you alone, my father, God, as the living God. My father, God, we bless your name, Lord. My God, we bless your name. My God, we bless your name, Jesus, my father. My father, God, you is like to you, O Lord. Oh, my father, there ain't no one like unto you, Lord Jesus, my God. You sit high and you will go. You tie all things together, my father, that's a perfect city, my father. My father, God, you are king of all, Lord. You are the one, my father, God, that lifts up our heads, my father. My God, we turn to you, my father, God. And we say, here we are, my father. So much could have been done, my father, God. So much for the present ladies out, my father. But because of your grace, Lord, because of your love, my God, because of your mercy, my father, we are here, my father, God, to proclaim your name. We are here, my father, God, able, my father, God, to say, my God, that you alone are God, that you are worthy, my father, that no matter, my father, God, will take your place, my God, we shall worship. 
Jesus forever. We shall bless and find you on high and raise up your name, Lord, as a banner, my father God, so that all can see and name my father God. No matter what we do, no matter what we do, my father, you are the God of my life, my father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. My father God, we're not just here, my father God, just together, my father God, just to be able to be like a little student, my father God, just so that we can take me, just so that we can be like that, just to one other, my father. But my God, we are crying out, my father God, unto you this morning, my God. And we're saying, Lord God Almighty, don't miss me or Lord. Don't miss me or Lord, my God. I don't want to be just a number on the star, my father God. I want to be blessed by you, oh God. I can't take my father God, my father God. Even me, oh Lord. Even me, 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 L
speak speak loud so that we can truly be able to listen speak loud so that we can trust and obey in Jesus mighty name amen in the name of Jesus thank you Lord thank you Jesus amen thank you Jesus there ain't nothing like the presence of God man nothing like his presence nothing nothing compares to the presence of God and if he's placed us here there's absolutely no doubt that he truly wants to give us something so let's just allow him to give it to us if he has to rebuke let him rebuke if he has to shake us up let him shake us up but I don't know about you, but I want to be able to know how to own these shifts and be able to walk in these shifts with him. Amen. So I'm just going to say, just again, good morning. (laughs) And we're just going to go into, we're going to go into the meeting, but uh, I just have to just highlight just a few just a few things before we actually go into the very very formal introduction amen so um I think for me I just want to just say just again welcome and highlight what we always highlight especially to those that are here for their very first time so if you're connected with us for the very first time is this is the very first time you have connected to one of our meetings I just want to say even on behalf of the entire team that you are welcome and just highlight the fact that yes we are unashamed worship we are a worship ministry and we provide spontaneous worship experiences and everything that we do and in all that we do we just want to encourage and we always encourage everyone to live daily surrendered lifestyles amen and um, we hold meetings on the first Saturday of every month with different themes as the Lord places it in us and upon us to be able to deliver so this morning is a prayer meeting and it's so beautiful because it does land on the first day of a brand new month so I'm just um, really just thrilled with that I love it when it does land on the first amen so this is our meeting, first Saturday meeting for October, and the title for today's meeting is Preparation for the Shift, Preparation for the Shift, and there are two key words, two key words in that title, or if I'm to say there are two root words in that title, and those two root words are the words prepare and the word shift. So if you want to write that in the chat, just so that it can actually resonate, it's the word prepare, and it's the word shift. And so what is going to take place, because today's meeting is led by one of our ministers in the team, which is Minister Nikki, amen. And what is actually going to take place is that we're going to be giving you the tools, the tools on how to be prepared, right? Because shifts can be sudden, (laughs) but also shifts can be actually seen. And we'll go into that, but essentially, how do you prepare? And if you've been in a sudden shift, what do you do? (laughs) I'm in it already. What do you do? We're gonna be addressing quite a few things, but it's gonna be in and around that keyword preparation, amen. And we're gonna be praying against hindrances, hindrances to shifts in our lives, hindrances. And I think that's key. It is a prayer meeting and we want to be able to identify certain hindrances and pray against it. So therefore, we're able to leave this meeting, even with maybe something that we weren't aware of, but to be aware of, but know for a fact that, you know what, that Goliath, that situation, that, let's say, manipulation in a thing been defeated in the name of Jesus amen so we're going to be talking about preparation but we're going to be praying against different hindrances to shifts in our lives so let's just keep our hearts as we've started with our hearts being fully open before God let's keep our hearts open amen to what God is going to unveil, to what God is going to say, and the instructions that God is going to give throughout this call. You, only you know what you are going through. And 
it's not something that I can say in or whatever for you, you know. <laughs> it's like, you know what I mean? I grew up um, for a few years in Jamaica and they have the same, I say, you know, you know, definitely you know. And if you don't know, it's going to end up being unveiled to you if you allow the Spirit of God to do so. And when it does, just be able to know how to move with how God is going to instruct you to deal with that. Because there may be certain things blocking, there may be certain hindrances that you, you didn't realize it was. And when God unveils that, we're going to just hold that captive and we're going to deal with that in the realm of the spirit today. Amen. So you won't just end up, let's say, surviving or just being like, you know, hoo-ha kind of moment. You will end up really walking and authority in your shifts. And I really believe that God will allow you to thrive and survive in your shifts. By the end of this call, he will give you a real, real eye opener in terms of what is taking place. And we hear that on this call, we're just going to stir and allow God to just do his thing. Amen. So remember those two key words, prepare. And we're going to be dealing with those hindrances against shifts. Amen. So on that note, I'm just going to pass pass everything over to Minister Nikki, who's going to go into the meet and introduct and kind of more or less a little bit more detail into the introduction of this meeting. And then have your hearts open, as mentioned, and let us get ready to be able to hear from God and get ready to pray and allow him to do what only he can do. Amen. God bless you. And over to you, Minister Nikki. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, Thessalonians. Good morning, everybody. And again, thank you for joining us. Um, so as uh, as said already, this meeting is preparation for the shift. So for those of you that know our November conference this year will be um, theme the sh like the shift and just out of nowhere kind of like as I was in church on a Sunday morning I just heard a voice say to me you know like what happens before the shift whether that was me asking God or whether that was the Holy Spirit checking in with me a voice just said to me what happens before the shift and it's quite evident that, you know, things happen in our everyday life. And if we're not ready and we're unprepared, they may come as a shock or we, we don't get the fullness of those things. We find ourselves sort of like a little bit confused, discombobulated, rushing around trying to catch up where we should have been already placed in a position to receive the change, to be able to really receive the fullness and you know the good that that change or that shift has to offer so with that question what happens before the shift I kind of just allowed the spirit to take me a little bit deeper into that meditation um and this was bearing in mind during Sunday service I probably should have been focused a little bit more on the Sunday service but at that time you know God speaks anytime and anywhere um and, and that's the time that he chose to kind of, you know, fellowship with me at that moment. So, yes, I heard a voice say, what happens before the shift? And God took me to, you know, the example of when you're driving a car, before the car shifts in any way, before you shift the gear to start moving, before you shift the gear to reverse, before you you know you shift the gear to slow down, you have to put your foot on the clutch. So saying, okay, why is that being brought to my mind? Why am I being reminded of you know driving? Why why is God giving me that analogy? So I quickly did a quick Google search about the clutch, clutch, the meaning of the word clutch, or what does the clutch do in a car? And as we know, the word clutch means maybe to hold on to something. So. You know, there's that, that saying uh, when something sort of like quite um, shocking happens, they say, oh, I clutch my pearls. Like, well, you know, you're clutched by something to hold into your hand. But I said, OK, there's something like what took me to the, the thought or the picture, the image of the car. What does the clutch actually do in the car? So I looked and it was a little bit technical. So. Um, 
I wasn't really able to understand right there and then. So as you do, you know, you search, um, what is such and such for dummies? So I said, what does the clutch do for dummies? Like in layman's terms. So it came up with various explanations and two words that stood out to me most were disengage or release and to hold. So as I said already, when you clutch something, you hold onto it, you hold on tightly. But the word disengage and the word to hold are kind of opposites in a way. When you hold onto something, you hold onto it tightly, you're engaged with that thing. But when you disengage or you release that thing, you let it go. You can't be holding onto something tightly if you're letting something go. So it was then revealed to me a little bit further that there, there were some things that you disengage with, but another thing that you hold on to. And it immediately came to me that, okay, we have to be holding on to Christ regardless. We have to be holding on to the word of God regardless. With whatever's going on in our circumstances, our situations, we always have to be holding on to God to keep us firmly. And then he said, anchored. So the three words that he gave to me in that meditation, in those few minutes on that Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, sorry, was prepare, clutch, and anchor. So I'm just sort of like looking in my notes, sorry, to just go in a little bit about what the word clutch came up as so that I can read out the definition. Um, so it says the word clutch in terms of when driving, when depressed, the clutch disengages or releases the engine from the wheel. So the engine's always spinning. When the wheels, when the engine's spinning and the engine is connected to the wheels, the wheels spin and the car moves. So it says, when the wheels are spinning, the clutch allows you to shift gears without grinding the teeth of each separate gear. So what the clutch does is it disengages or releases the engine from the wheels so that we can shift gears so the wheels stop spinning along with the engine. We can shift gears and it allows us to either speed up, slow down, stop, stop or start. It says, before you shift gears, the clutch must be pushed. So we must get disengaged before we shift gears. So when, when, I, when I thought about it in the spiritual, I said, wow. So when we shift, when, when before we shift, we must disengage. What are the things that we need to disengage from? What are the things that are hindering us from shifting? What are the strongholds that are keeping us bound to our previous or our past season or circumstances. When we think about those things, it could be things, it could be memories, it could be people, it could even be um, attachments to places, it could even be trauma. There are things that you know we hold without even thinking of in our life that keeps us attached to certain seasons that God wants to move us out of. And the longer we hold on to those things, the less likely that we are going to be able to move as the Spirit of God wants us to move, the, the more it's going to be a struggle for us. I'm just going to fast forward a little bit in my notes to a scripture. Sorry, one second. To a scripture that says that even in the, you know, it says that in James 4, 1 to 10, sorry, it says, submit ourselves to God. And it, it says, what causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires, the battle within you? You desire, but do not help. So you kill, you covet, but you cannot get what you want. So you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. So this, so I, I believe the Holy Spirit brought this scripture to my remembrance because there was a word that I heard a long time ago that said that our, 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 our pain comes from our desires. When our desires are not in alignment with the desires of God for us, that's where there's friction, that's where there's tension, that's where there's a pull, that's where there's, you know, a discomfort, a pain. When we want to move in a direction that God doesn't want us to move or we want to stay somewhere where God is saying, this is not your place anymore, this is not your position anymore, we're going to feel a tug, we're going to feel a pull, we're going to feel some kind of um, friction and it's going to be uncomfortable. And that's when we kind of know that, okay, we're possibly most, most likely not where we're supposed to be. Because why are we feeling like this? Why is everything such a struggle? Why am I, it's, it's almost like, 
if we try and change gear without dis without engaging the clutch, then our wheels cannot disengage and, and, and we cannot shift freely. So going back to the initial meditation and where the Holy Spirit gave me this sort of like revelation. So we're going to prepare and clutch, prepare and anchor. So he also highlighted the anchor to me. And the anchor, the anchor is a tool that we know are used as ships dock. When ships want to stay still, they let down their anchor um, so that, that the anchor can, you know, drive into the seabed and the ships don't move. So that's the first thought that came to me when I thought of anchor. But in further searching and seeking for, for what that word, you know, meant, because I was thinking, okay, why is this? Whenever God brings me a word, I always like to look deeply because what my first thought or my first interpretation or my first understanding is, it, it's not always that. It's a little bit more than that. So I looked into the word anchor. And many a time Christ has been referred to as our anchor. But in seeking out the definition and looking a little deeper, I found that there are different types of anchors used for different purposes. So the def the, a quote from Google. So in looking for the definition, I found a quote from Google and it read, for each type of job, structure and industry, there is a different type of anchor. In order to offer maximum safety for workers, it's essential to select the right anchorage or anchors must provide a secure fixing point. So I believe at that moment, the Holy Spirit was saying to me, an anchor that is not providing a secure fixing point is not fit for purpose and will only put you in an unsafe place. It will put you in place in unsafe territory. So when taking it to the spiritual and thinking about anchors and how and why they're used, Christ should always be our anchor. Only Christ, the word of God, should always be our anchor. But in reality, not everybody is anchored by Christ. Some people, their identity may be anchored by their job, their achievements, their marriage, their material things. Like I said, even trauma, traumatic experiences and their behavior and mindset that stemmed from those experiences. Those are the things that anchor them. And once those things, once those things go, then the person loses themselves. So once we're not anchored firmly in Christ, we are, you know, at risk of losing ourselves. And that is unsafe territory because once we lose ourselves and we open up ourselves for the enemy to start playing in our mind and in our hearts and doing all sorts of things that you know we're not purposed to experience and, and God didn't plan for us it puts us in very unsafe territory okay so in highlighting these things the clutch which releases disengages in order for us to hold on, it disengages for us to be able to move, change from stop to start, from start to stop, from you know, fast to slow, from whatever period or season we are in our life. You know, we have to disengage from the things that are holding us from moving to where you know God wants us to move and hold on to Christ, submit ourselves, surrender ourselves to the word of God hold on to that so that we can move and be anchored firmly so that in our season of shift in this season of shift we are not lost we are not left behind in meditating briefly last night in preparation for this morning's meeting god reminded me of the um, parable of the 10 virgins five of them prepared five of them got their oils ready in their lamp and were waiting you know for the groom five of them just you know hung about and did they slept they did whatever it is that they want they didn't prepare and they got left behind and I said God I don't want to get left behind in this season of shift this season of newness this season of change I don't want to get left behind and the moment if we think about how great our God is 
and how infinite he is. And then how small we are in comparison, how childlike we are in comparison. We are just but a drop of water in a huge ocean of what God is. I don't want to get left behind. Even though he calls us out individually, he knows us uniquely, yes. He calls us, he, he, he's created us, he calls us, he's chosen us, he calls us. But I don't want to get left behind because I weren't responsible enough to prepare for this season that he's taking us into. So today, beautiful people, people of God, we are going to look at what preparation is in terms of preparing for a shift, whether it's spiritual, mental, emotional, physical. As Prophet Tessalizia says, the shift always starts within. So we've already prayed, you know, creating us a clean, God creating us a clean heart. It prepares within. It says in the word that God looks at our hearts. He doesn't look at our exterior. He doesn't look at what we look like outside. He looks at our hearts, even in our actions. He looks at our intentions. Where is it coming from? Where is the foundation? The foundation is within us, within our hearts. So once we ask him to create in us a clean heart and we take the responsibility to ensure that what we are putting into us remains clean and what is coming out of us then remains clean, then we can begin to prepare ourselves for this season of shift. So just bear with me as I go into, okay, so talking about the shift. So the first scripture that, you know, was brought to my remembrance was that, you know, when we accept Christ, so therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. When we accept Christ, we are, going to be re renewed we're going to be made new so there's already going to be that change that shift that is done within us as we said at the beginning of this meeting in me God wants to do a change God wants to do a job in me God wants to do a work in me so it says therefore if any man be in Christ he is a new creature the old things are passed away behold all things are become new we become new from the inside out so as children of God we should expect newness and change God will never leave us in a time or season that we have outgrown as long as we are in him we grow in him so as long as we are in him we will continuously change and evolve to align more with him to look and sound more like him to resemble him for his honor and for his glory in Jeremiah 29 11 it says for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope as it says these changes will be for good and not for evil so if we know that our God changes us not for good and not for evil people of God why would we not want to hold on to Christ so that we can prepare for that change so it says in Isaiah 43, 1 to 71, that we are called by his name and created for, for his glory. So 1 to 7, <laughs> typo, 1 to 7, excuse me. Isaiah 43, 1 to 7. So I'll read it quickly. It says, but now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he formed you, Israel. Do you not fear? For I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. So God has called us by name. We are his. It says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, rivers they will not sweep you over. When you walk through the fire, it will, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for ransom, Cush and Seba in your stead. Since you are precious and honored in my sight and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for your life. So do not be afraid for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up and to the south. Do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. So again, God created us for his glory. So in us and in what we, in who we are and in what we do, again, in who we are inside and how that is manifested out, we are called to glorify God. So if we're called to glorify God, he's not going to take us into a position that is not good for us and therefore won't be good in, in, in terms of 
his glorification. It won't show who he is. So if we know these things about God, we have to ask ourselves what keeps us stagnant, what hinders us when it is time to move. When he says move, what stops us from actually moving? Is it that we fear change? Um, do we believe that we thrive most in our comfort zone when in actual fact we surrender and submit ourselves to like a mental, emotional, spiritual prison when we remain in our comfort zones. When we remain in our comfort zones, we have a false sense of safety, a false sense of security, when in actual fact, what we're doing is basically plugging our feet into a, a, a position where we cannot move. So the, 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 the world, the spiritual world, the physical world, it moves around us and we stay stagnant, we stay still. And then therefore we get, left behind so to speak so why you know do we find security in a place where we're getting left behind instead of finding security in Christ where he is going to gently pull us stretch us and shift us into our rightful position where God can be glorified and where we can come into the fullness of who we are supposed to be who we're called to be who we're created to be in Christ so in my notes I've written to know God as a good father who only wants the best for us why do we not submit ourselves to him in every area of our lives it's easy to speak with our mouth but are we submitting ourselves are we surrendering ourselves with our heart because speaking with our mouth and doing with our heart is completely different you can say a word with your mouth one day and the next day you forget but when something is ingrained in your heart you will remember and you will live it every single moment of every single day and even if for whatever reason you slip or you backslide or you you know get knocked off course you will go back because it's ingrained in your heart it is who you are it becomes your identity so yeah we may be able to move and gain without a full surrender to achieve but what can we do in our own strength in comparison to what the holy spirit what what the spirit of god can do in us with us for us and through us i say in us first because it always starts in us as we have learned already the holy spirit said to me do i really want the shift so i'm asking you do you really want the shift i remember um a couple of weeks ago at a women's conference that we held at my church and one of the pastors powerful woman of god said that you know there was a man who came for healing. He had some kind of physical impairment and he came for healing. And um, the pastor said, when he came, do you really want that healing? Bearing in mind, when you receive that healing, you won't get those benefits that you get financially from the state, you know, because of your disability. You won't get the material benefits that you get, you know, the comfortable life that you, that you get now. Um, that you get because of you know because of your impairment once you are totally healed you have to forfeit those things there are a lot of people that that are that when they hear the promise of god they run towards it in excitement but like i said before you can say with your mouth that you submit or that you surrender but if you do not truly with your heart then it the surrender won't it won't happen so we have to recognize first that the shift at the shift, that place where God wants to take us, will take us out of what we know. It will take us out of our comfort zone. It will take us out of that feeling of having control over our situation and our circumstances. We have to ask ourselves, are we ready to make and or accept the changes that will come in and around as a result of the shift? So again, many of us believe that we're ready and declare that we're ready, yet we hold on to things of the past. We reject the newness that Christ's resurrection can do in us. When the going gets tough and we feel uncomfortable, we fight the shift with memories of the good times and the attachment to the old things, the people that were in our lives, the, the, the places that we used to go, the memories basically that keep us bound to our past, our previous season. And we cannot in the word, it says that, you know, we cannot serve two masters. So we cannot have one foot in the past and expect to be carried into our, into our future, into our shift with God. So in James 4.1.10, it speaks again um, of the fight, you know, that we go through 
this was this is the part that I jumped forward sorry guys so it speaks of the fact that we go through that internal fight that external fight when part of us is um, trying to do one thing and other part of us wants to hold on to something else that is not in alignment there is going to be a fight it is going to be a struggle and it's not something that we can actively move forward or be carried forward in um in the in the spirit of god you know we cannot be carried forward if we are holding on to the past it says you know even with lot when, when they were coming out of Sodom and Gomorrah with Lot's wife because they don't look back or you'll be turned to a pillar of, of salt Lot's wife looked back she looked back she was looking at what was going on behind her instead of following the voice of God instead of following you know what God said and moving in accordance to what he was saying so that she can get to a place of safety she turned into a pillar of salt people of God if we look at that metaphorically and physically when we look back we become stagnant we become stuck we become stuck in the past and we become immovable so God is not able to do what he is setting out to do in us and with us and move us to a territory of newness we will not be able to participate in the season of shift if we are looking back if we are holding on to the past so we have to disengage we have to disengage from our past and we have to hold on to the word of god let go of our de our desires and hold on to the desires that god has for us so if we look at matthew 19 16 to 29 it speaks of the rich man and his pursuit to get into the kingdom of god so i'm not going to read the whole passage um because of time but um i urge us all to go back and read it just to you know re-familiarize ourselves with the story matthew 19 16 to 29 so the man comes up to Jesus and this is a rich man you know he has all the material wealth that he could want and he says teacher what do I do to get in to have eternal life and Jesus basically says that you know follow the commandments love you know your neighbor do not murder do not commit adultery you know um he says the, and then the man says I've done all of those things what else do I you know need to do what do I lack and then Jesus said to him well if you want to be perfect sell all your positions you know, give them all to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. You will have your everlasting life and follow me. Most importantly, he says, follow me. But the man didn't want to sell his possessions. It says in the word that he was sad and he walked away. You know, he heard this and he went away sad because he had great wealth. And then lower down in that passage, it says that Jesus said to his disciples that it's easier for a camel to get through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get into heaven why because when we accumulate things in the physical when we accumulate material things for those of us that don't accept acknowledge and submit to the glory of god we find it difficult to let go of those things because again false sense of security if i've got lots of money i can pay my bills i can go anywhere i want i can get onto a plane i can you know run away from disaster i don't have to rely on god because i've already got the means but God says that we need to rely on him. We need to lean on him. He is our strength when we are weak. He is our help in times of trouble. If we are, if we are holding on to everything else that can be our help, for example, we're not going to hold on to God and we're not going to even be listening. We're not going to be sensitive to his word. We're not going to be taking the time to get to know him and dive, dive deeper into him and strengthen our relationship with him. And therefore, when it is time for that shift, where are we going to be? We're going to be off with our money, driving around in our cars, you know, um, having the best time at the, the the latest parties and wearing the latest fashion when the children of God that have truly submitted and surrendered themselves to him they're getting ready to shift they're getting ready to go into the newness they're getting ready to go into depth deeper depths of you know having a relationship with him and then seeing that glory as a result so this man is a a, a good example of someone that is that has failed to disengage from those things that are a hindrance to what his goal was, eternal life. Um, on the flip side, in Genesis 15, uh, four to six, it's, it, it shows us that, you know, God said to Abraham that he will have his own heir, a son that has his own flesh and blood, despite Abraham and Sarah being in old age, senior age, he, he made them a promise. And it says in Genesis 15, 6, Abraham believed the Lord and he credited it to 
him as righteousness. So despite what Abraham's and Sarah's circumstances looked like at that time, when he was Abraham, he still believed, he still held on to God's word. Throughout Genesis from 15 to 22, we can see the journey that Abraham took with God with his family members but with God it wasn't just a conversation a one-off conversation it wasn't just a one-off experience it was a true life encounter it was a life journey he started off with you know God making the promise and Abraham saying okay you know what I'm going to trust you Um, I'm going to trust you I'm going to believe you I'm going to stand on that promise and even in the times whereby um, things were looking a bit bleak you know, it might. It took a long time. It took years. They were they were waiting years, and they were only getting older and older and older. So imagine God has promised you something. God has promised you something. You're waiting years and years and years and years, and what looks impossible to man, God is saying, "No, it's possible for me." What is impossible for God? Nothing. So God is saying, "I'm going to do this for you." And even in the back of your mind, you you know, in your heart, you want to trust God, but in the back of your mind, you're thinking, "Oh my gosh, God, this is this is cutting. You're cutting a bit fine. Like, what's going on here?" Are you still going to do what you said you're going to do? And God keeps saying, you know, I'm going to do what I said I was going to do. But people whisper in your ears. People say to you, are you sure? What are you waiting for? You know, you're foolish for waiting or, or you know, things, this is getting, this is taking too long. Let's just do it ourselves, you know. So eh, you wave on, you say, okay. You know, as God did um, with Sarah's um, handmaid, he, he, he allowed her to persuade him to kind of take it upon himself. But even still, he recognized, he had to recognize at one point that, you know, this was not the will of God. For him to have Ishmael was not, you know, his promise, God's promise was not upon upon Ishmael. So even though he had Ishmael, he still came to God and said, you know what, why not let your promise be upon my son? And God said, no, that's not what I said. God is a promise keeper. He's a covenant keeper. What he says will not return void. So when he says to us, he will do something know that he will do it and you might present him with something different he will still say you know what because I love you I will you know yeah mm, but no I'm still gonna do what I said I was gonna do so he said you will have a son with your wife and he will you know he will have the blessing but I will still bless Ishmael because he's your son and because I love you and because you know you st- you've held on to me this long you know your faithfulness it shows so throughout the throughout Genesis 15, all the way up to 22, you know, um, again, we we go through the story of Abraham and his uh, family going into Sodom and Gomorrah and he sits down and he fellowships with God. He has a conversation with God and he says, you know, he's he's even his relationship is secure enough and, and deep enough and he's close enough to God where he can sit down and say, God, do you know what? Even though you said that this place was terrible and you're just going to get rid of it because you know they're just so so evil if I find 10 people will you you know can you just and God says okay you know what for you because you've asked yeah I'll do that so imagine a relationship with God when you have a relationship with God he will move mountains for you as it says in the word he will he will change big things that are going on in the world just for you want you know, you don't know. You you might say to him, oh, God, I'm tired. I'm tired. I don't want to go into work today. I've had experience of this myself. I've woken up in the morning tired. I don't want to go into work. I'm tired. And I've said, God, I'm tired. And I got a call from the, the mother of my client saying, um, Nikki, such and such is, is a bit tired or is a bit unwell. He, he's not coming into school today. So don't worry, no work. Oh, thank God. I can go back to bed. When my children have gone to bed, I can go back to bed and sleep. I would be foolish not to believe that God had a hand in that because it's happened so many times. I do not believe in coincidences. It's happened so many times. So when you hold on to God, when you submit and surrender yourself to God, when you have a heart after God, when you sit down with God and you talk to God and your relationship with God is not just one of a of one conversation and then walking away because of what he said you don't like. When you submit yourself and you say, you know what, God, even though this might be uncomfortable for me, I trust you you seek him and he you will find him it says when you knock at the door the door will be open when you see you shall find when you ask him for even the smallest things you don't even get on your knees and pray you just you know you say it in your heart he hears you before you even ask he provides for you before you even come to him with your hands stretched out but anyway sorry going back to genesis 
we see this, we see this in action. In, we see an example of this in action in the life of Abraham. So the point where he even changes Abraham's name, he gives him a new identity in him because the faithfulness that Abraham has had, the trust that Abraham has had, the, 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 the loyalty, the reverence, the honor that Abraham has given God, he, he, he changes him from one man to another. You know, and not not only does he change Abraham's name, but he changes his wife's name, the wife that that um, that didn't even believe as far as Abraham did, the one that had doubts, the one that was impatient, the one that even laughed when God said, "I am gonna do what I said I'm gonna do." She laughed to the point where God said, "Why did your wife laugh?" And she said, "I didn't. I did." She felt shame at that point, like, "Oh my God, you know, how can I laugh that God said such and such?" But he still, through Abraham, changed. The name of his wife so that we, people of God it shows that when we are truly submit and surrender to God our family members our generations will benefit of the blessings of God um, that God has you know that God bestows upon our life as as um as like a gift to our surrender as a gift for our surrender so there's a few things that I've highlighted here just in Genesis um genesis 21 um genesis 22 sorry 1 to 18 there's a few points that i've highlighted the first being sometime later god tested abraham he said to abraham he said to him abraham here i am he replied so whenever god called abraham abraham said here i am when god calls you are you in a position to say here i am and even if you do say here i am with your mouth are you saying it with your heart God said, Abraham said, here I am. And God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac. So at this point, Abraham now has had his son, Isaac, the son that God promised him, the son that he waited years and years and years for, the son that his wife, you know, doubted that would come because of her old age. He said, take your son, Isaac, whom you love. And God said, your son, your only son. So Isaac was the legitimate son. Isaac was the promised. So it says, take your son, your only son, whom you love, and go to the region of Moriah, sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on the mountain, I will show you. So God is now testing Abraham. He's had this long journey of building his relationship with God. Abraham has become very close to him, and God is saying, you know what? Fair enough, he can say it with his mouth, he can tell me to go where I tell him to go, but let me take the one thing that he absolutely loves the most that he was waiting for all this time and tell him to give it back to me will he really do that because then I will see his heart if he does or if he doesn't that's when I will see the true posture of his heart what did Abraham do he took his son he took it says he took his son he took wood for a burnt offering you know he took a couple of um his men he took a donkey and he went up to the mountain. Did he tell his wife? No, because in the past we see that his wife was the one that doubted. I'm sure if he told his wife, Sarah, she would have held on to Isaac and cursed at Abraham and told him, you know, how, de how dare you even think of such a thing? But Abraham held on to God who he knew God as and who he knew himself as in God he held on to that he disengaged from the fact that Isaac was his son he disengaged from the fact that he loved Isaac so much he disengaged from the fact that you know he had waited for this son for years and years and years and years and years and years and, years and that he was probably too old by now to even have another he and his wife he disengaged from the fact that you know people um, around him um, lacked faith and probably doubted and all of those things and he held on to God and God's promise and who he knew God was so he took his son and he said to the to the servants that he took with him stay here stay at the foot of the mountain me and my son are going to go up and worship because he knew that if he brought his servants to the top of the mountain those servants would probably fight him to try and not let him um, sacrifice Isaac but he took it to the very end, to the point where he got to the mountain. He placed that. Wood, he placed the wood um, for the burnt offering. And even Isaac said, "Where's the sacrifice? Where's the lamb that you're going to sacrifice, Dad? Like, what is going on? We come up here with all of the things that we need to make a sacrifice, except for the lamb. How can we make a sacrifice without a lamb?" And Abraham said, "God will prepare for Himself a lamb." 
Now, if we look a little bit further, God did prepare for himself a lamb in Jesus Christ. He said to Abraham, you know, stop. Don't sacrifice your son. Don't lay a hand on him. Don't do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your one and only son. So when God calls us to do something, when God calls us to move, when God calls us to shift, are we able to give everything that we are and everything that we have onto him and just hold on to what he's to him to what he's calling us for to what he's calling us to do to who he says we are in him to who he is to us to what the word says are we holding on to that or are we holding on to everything around us and saying no you know what i can't afford to lose this i can't afford to lose that i can't go there because of this that and the other i can't do this because of that and the other i don't want to lose that person because they did that and the other for me are we are we hearkening to the voice of God or are we holding on to our hind are we holding on to the things that are hindering us from moving where God wants us to move? So I highlighted again um, verse 15. It says the angel of God called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sand on a seashore. Your descendants will take possession of cities of their enemies and through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me now if we just something in reading the word sometimes um there are certain uh, passages in the scripture that because of the current times that we live in they might not seem as significant um to us in general but going back to the past in history that were very significant even in certain cultures when you look now um us living in the modern and western world having children for everyone is not a must but when you look at certain cultures especially historical and certain sort of like eastern cultures having children is a must having children is a blessing if you don't have children then you're seen as barren and as prophetess said at the beginning of the meeting what starts on the inside will show itself out so if you don't have children as in the word it says both of them be fruitful we know that that means not only in the physical but also in the spiritual but it was seen as if you don't have children then you're not fruitful and you're barren so that spoke to your spirit what you carried inside if you're not able to produce outwardly it spoke to what you carried inside so god is saying to abraham that i will show i will i will i will show how fruitful you are, not only because, you know, you're, you're, you have a heart after me, that you trust in me, you have faith in me, that your spirit is in alignment with mine, that you walk with me, but this will be shown by the generations, by your offspring, by your sons, your daughters, your sons, sons, your, and it will continue that your bloodline, your descendants will be, will walk in alignment with me because you have, your bloodline will be close to me because you have are we allowing God to do that work in us? When we look at our children, can we honestly say that, you know what, well, I know, I know because of my faith that you will forever be favoured. You will ever be sat in the palm of God's hand, that my faith will pave a way for you. Do we, can we say that? Can we look at our children and say that for sure? Even looking at ourselves. So if we move on now and we look at, the comparison between the rich man in Matthew and Abraham in Genesis, we can clearly see a huge difference. The rich man was only showcased for that small period. From what we know in that passage, his experience with Christ remained just that, a brief experience. We don't know what happened to that man or where he went from there. He became pretty much a non-factor. He became lost amongst those that stood out. And I believe this is because he chose to hold on to the things that fed his carnal desires over Christ himself, who would build him up spiritually, leading him to a greater destiny and purpose in God. So just like as the scripture says, God knows us not when we're lukewarm and double-minded. There's no point in doing all the good deeds in the world, that the word says, following all the, you know, the, the laws, but we haven't given our heart. We haven't surrendered our heart. We are not holding on to um, God. We haven't surrendered our heart to God. 
Whereas Abraham's experience with the Lord was one of a lifetime. Like we said, he walked with God throughout. He convened with him. He questioned him. He queried him. He shared a level of depth and intimacy within the relationship that he had with God. And it was personal. He held on to the promise that God had initially made him from the beginning, which made way for the shift to take place in his life at God's appointed time. So, yeah, again, Abraham believed Abraham chose to believe, sorry, Abraham chose to believe God despite what his circumstances told him. Um, Abraham was at an age whereby um, he, in terms of sort of like producing an heir, he was empty by the understanding of man, you know, his wife, she, she would have been barren by then. We know by a certain age, a woman can't produce um, children because, you know, we go through menopause, et cetera, et cetera. But um, so in that time, Abraham and his wife, if he were to have a child, it would be for his wife. And, and his wife at the time was old. It said that, you know, she she didn't believe it because she was of old age, etc. So his trust allowed him to be carried through and have sub subsequent encounters with God, building and deepening their relationship over time to the point where God changed, again, he and his wife's name, their identity. And thus, in changing their identity, they changed the identity of their descendants to come. So this is the type of relationship we need to have with God. This is the depth of knowledge we should have about who God is for ourselves and within our own personal experience. We should be able to say, we know that God is our this. We know that God is our that. We know that we look to God in times of need because this is the experience that we've had with God. And in looking at the scriptures, this is the experience that others have had with others have had with God and we know that this is the type of God that he is so we can trust him we can rely on him he will sustain us he will provide for us he only wants for our good why because he said so and he is God so if we look back in our lives if we can take a moment just to reflect on a time that God has done a work in us for us where he shifted things out of the way for us where he's moved things into alignment for us where he's brought us out of situations that we felt we couldn't come out of by our own understanding of our own knowledge of how things were in our own strength if we can if we can't say that we at least can see one time or remember one time we're either walking with our eyes closed or we're just point blank lying because i know that i can say that i know and have experienced many many times so yeah um our house can shelter us for a time, but it will not feed us when we're hungry. Our money may bring about nice things, but it will not love and comfort us in times of need. These material things, these things that, you know, harbor our hearts, these things that um, bog down our minds need to be released from our hands and our hearts so we can hold on family to God, hold on to the word of God and be able to be carried with him in that season, that time of shift so how do we prepare for the shift first and foremost we have to acknowledge accept and stand firmly on the word of god we have to know that god is god and he is still god i've just taken out a few scriptures i'm not going to read all of um, what they say because of time but i do urge you to make a note of them and look um study them and meditate on them in your own time um so the first being Samuel 22, 32 to 34, um, it states that God is our rock, our strength, and the one that helps us stand tall. Psalm 54 to 4, it says he is our help and our sustainer. 1 John 1, 5, it says he is our shining light. Isaiah 40, 28, it says he is everlasting, the creator of the earth. In Numbers 23, 19, it says he is unchangeable, a promise keeper, and he is the truth. In Psalm 18, 30, it says his ways are perfect and he is our shield. And in Psalm 56, it says he is righteous and just. These are just a few um, ways that, you know, we know we can know God. 
everyone is going to have their own experience and own encounter throughout their lives with God. And he is going to show up in different ways for each and every one of us. But we have to first acknowledge this and we have to accept this because sometimes it's difficult to accept that God is the be all and end all of our life. We cannot do it ourselves. If we try, we will stumble, we will trip, we will fall. And if our, even if our life looks great, when we think about salvation, if God has called us to have everlasting life, so this life is not the only life that we live. We are called to live a life with him in heaven. So if we have not sub submit ourselves, surrendered ourselves, accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior, we will not live that life everlasting in heaven. We might be happy on earth. We might be content on earth. We might, you know, use all the material things and whatnot to comfort us when we feel like we need to. But will we meet our God? Will we meet our King? Will we meet our Father in heaven at the end of days? No. So we first have to acknowledge, accept, and stand firmly on the knowledge that God is who he says he is. Secondly, we have to acknowledge and accept that we are a child of God and we are renewed in Christ. Then and only then, because even if we know that God is awesome, I mean, let me use myself as an example. Even if we know that God is awesome, he is great. He is a miracle working God. He's a covenant keeper. He works, you know, in and um, with people to change their life for the better. If we don't accept that we are a child of God, we have been called by him and we will not accept and embrace this for ourselves, and therefore that will be a block and a hindrance to our surrender and therefore a block and a hindrance to moving in our season of shift with him so again i'm going to give some um script i'm going to give some verses i'm not going to read the whole scripture i'm just going to pull out um, some key points so second corinthians 5 17 we have to accept and acknowledge that we are a new creation in him when we accept christ we are a new creation first corinthians 11 1 we should strive to be imitators of christ following his example so <clears throat> we should follow the example of christ in john 4 24 it says we were created to worship in spirit and in truth in Romans 12, 1, it says, and to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. In 1 John 5, we are called to love God and his children and show this in the following of God's commandments. So we show that we love God by doing what he says, by being obedient. So obedience is better than sacrifice. We should, we should, excuse me, we should follow God's commandments. And that is our our living a daily life in accordance to the word of God. That is our worship. That is giving ourselves unto God. That is saying, God, you know what? I love you and I trust you. So I'm just going to do what you say because I know you know best. John 15, 4, we were called to abide in Christ. To abide means to live or to, um, to act in accordance with. We were called to abide in Christ. At the beginning of the meeting, when Prophetess Alicia said, in me, the first thing that came to me is funny because God speaks, God speaks volumes, but he speaks to us individually in the ways that resonate to us that we can receive. It, when, when we said the words in me, that took me to in him, abide in him. That was like him saying, abide in me, be in me first. And then everything else you need, I will provide for you. Once we abide in Christ, he will abide in us. And then we will see fruits. Just like God promised Abraham to have, you know, to be a father of nations. Once we abide in him, we become fathers of nations, mothers of nations. Why? Because our fruits, we can produce those fruits, those spiritual fruits. And thus those manifest and come into fruition into the physical. Once we abide in him and he abide in us, then we can produce fruits. Amen. So once we have read the word and seen what God says about you, once we have read the word and see what God says about us, sorry, we need to believe it for ourselves. So we need to know God and know him for ourselves. No one can believe these things on our behalf enough for it to make a difference in our lives. Like I said, in my experience, when I was very, very young in Christ and I was going through my own journey of sort of like self-discovery and knowing who I am in Christ and believing who I am in Christ, I can believe and I can know that God is God and God is the one true God and God is all of this and above the Alpha and Omega. But if I do not believe it for my life, that leaves me in a position of um being stagnant 
I will remain in the same place. Why? Because I have not jumped in. Imagine you're, you're jumping on the 279 bus to go from Edmonton to Tottenham. You know the bus goes to Tottenham and you want to get to Tottenham, but you're just looking at everybody else getting on that bus going to Tottenham and you're standing still, belie not believing that that bus can too take you to Tottenham or you're worthy of getting on that bus to go to Tottenham. How are you going to get there <laughs> if you don't get on the bus? How are we going to get to where we're supposed to be going in God if we don't act, if we don't believe that we are worthy, that God has called us personally? God hasn't only just called the person down the road or your next door neighbor or that, you know, that mega pastor in that huge church that's got a testimony for days. He has called us too. We all have a testimony and we are all a testament to his greatness. So once we know that, we need to understand our spiritual identity, who God says we are and who he's called us to be. Once we find ourselves in him, all other things will begin to seem less important. We will, be, we will desire to release the extra weight, the extra baggage that is holding us down, that is hindering us from moving in and with him. And we will then want to hold on to him. We will want to let go of everything and just chase after him. So once we understand our true identity, we will chase after him. We will want to chase after him. Again, so we need to make first, so again, we need to make the choice to surrender. Uh, just like Jesus told the rich man in Matthew 19, we need to make the choice to get rid of all our possessions and follow him. So now we need to make the choice to, you know, get rid of all our modern idols, whether it's our favorite TV show that's taken, um, that's distracting us from having that um, prayer time and that meditation time in the word and, and fellowship with God, whether it's our job, you know, whether it's our titles and the accolades, our, our degree or our master's, or our PhD, whatever it is um, that is hindering us from getting closer to him in order to be able to know and be prepared for that shift. We need to tear that down. We need to ask him to tear that down. We need to surrender everything, our mind, body, spirit to him and follow his example. And when we do this, we give the Holy Spirit room to move in our lives, in us and speak to us so that we can hear clearly and discern. So while this is going on, while, while we are surrendering, while our hearts are being cleaned, while our you know, strongholds, our hindrances, our distractions are being torn down, this cleansing process, the pruning process, it's not, it's not comfortable. It will not be a walk in the park. It will not be a bed of, you know, daisies. When God cleanses and purifies us, he puts us through the fire and he tests us, just like he tested Abraham. He puts us in certain battlegrounds to ready us and equip us for the next level he has for us to attain. And if, he, if we are not equipped in this way, then we can start the journey and fall off halfway. He needs to know that, okay, once you're in it, you're in it and you're able and you're, you're ready to, to take that walk. The, the, the journey strengthens us. It gives us opportunity to delve deeper into our relationship with him. It gives us the opportunity to strengthen our spirit in him. It gives us the opportunity to fellowship more with him and fellowship with other um, uh, uh, people in the body, other Christians, other people of like mind, other, Christ other people who, are with, who we are equally yoked with, other people that are on the same or a similar journey and path to us so that you know, our spirit can be strengthened. So, and if the tests in the world, for example, are not, um, are stressful, sorry, are not easy, what makes us think that these times in Christ will be easy? Like nothing good comes easy. You know, what easy come, easy go, basically. So we must remember that everything God does unto us, in us, for us, is for our good. And as long as we follow his law and his commandments, we are safe in him and everything will work for our good. Amen. So we also have to bear in mind that throughout this process, the shift is not something to take lightly. We may not see it externally straight away. It, it will begin inside. And if we're not sensitive to this, then we may, it, you know, it may seem small, but those small changes, those small shifts that take place within us will resonate loudly, outwardly. Everything starts inside. As Prof. Tess said in the beginning, everything starts inside. And those things that begin inside will resonate outward loudly. As 
God, you know, as it says in Mark 7, 15, there is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him, but the things that come out of a person are what defiles him. So God starts off the work on the inside because the things that come out of us are the things that set us back, are the things that hinder us, are the things that keep us um, stagnant, are the things that keep us bound, the things that come out of us. So um, I'm not sure who was in, uh, we had a meeting, Issues of Life, um, where I spoke about forgiveness and that the heart carries things from our past that sometimes we are not even aware of. And because the heart carries them, everything that we do while our heart carries these things, traumatic experiences, you know, unforgiveness, um, anger, depression, anxiety, and rage, whilst our heart carries them, everything that we do and everything that we think and everything that we believe and everything that we are stems from our heart. And if our heart is tainted by these things, everything that we are will be tainted by these things. In the word, it says the things that come out of a person are what defile them. So if we are not careful, the things that come out of us, if not in alignment with God, if not placed there by God, will defile us. The times of testing are for us. Sometimes God puts us in certain situations so that we can see ourselves. We can wake up to the things that we didn't know that we were harboring. We can wake up to the things that were trapped in the tight corners of our heart that we thought that we got, you know, that we thought we let go of or got rid of years and years ago. But that creep up in those trying times, that's the time for us to, to get on our knees figuratively and um, literally speaking and say, God, I'm giving this to you because you know you've allowed me to go through this I've seen this um this this um feeling of low self-worth and I'm giving it to you because I know that's not who I am amen so just remember that we must let go of everything that is not of God and that does not reflect his glory and align with our purpose in him and we must hold on to Christ Jesus we must anchor ourselves in Christ and detach from all of those things that will keep us going in the wrong direction causing us to have internal fights with our soul and our spirit which will result in us being unprepared and left behind during the season of shift amen so my apologies it, it um I had to get that foundation the meat of you know what God was sharing with me out I had to get that out because um, it's really important that we know and understand where and why we are praying from so we're just going to go into a time of prayer now and I, I want everyone as we are praying to declare for themselves with their own mouth and their own heart the the, the prayers over their own lives um, reflect on who God is to you and who you are in him right now as I speak now reflect on the position that you stand in Christ be honest with yourself and be honest with God God sees your heart so if you are not where you feel you want to be or where you need to be speak to God now you don't have to come off mute this is a time for you to be intimate this is a time for you to you know really get down and get deep and get dirty with God right now be honest be truthful um you know seek him seek him and you will find him so the, the first prayer point is stemmed from John 8 31 to 32 and it says so he said to the Jews who had believed in him if you continue in my word you are truly my disciples then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free so we have been um we have briefly gone through the word we have highlighted who God is who we are in Christ you know we have looked at what it looks like to not hold on to God and we have looked at what it looks like to hold on and surrender ourselves to Christ um the word is there to give us direction guidance um instruction so when we look in the word um we 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 are open to the truth we open our eyes to the truth we have to open we ask we have to ask God sorry to open our spiritual eyes and our spiritual ears that when we read the word his revelation will come upon us and we will know the truth and the truth will set us free. So this first prayer point will be that we, his children, will hold on to him and surrender our hearts and minds to the truth about who God is and who we are in him. That his truth may be a light in our times of darkness, that the chains of stagnation will be broken in Jesus' name, and thus we will be able to abide in Christ and follow his word so that our hearts and minds can be cleansed and made ready to embark 
on a season of newness and a deeper and more intimate relationship with Christ. But if we don't have that relationship with him, then, you know, we are detached and we're disengaged. And it's not God that we want. It's not Christ. It's not God that we want to be disengaged from. It's Christ that we want to hold on to. So let us pray, children of God, once if so, if you're able to come off mute, please do. If you feel like this needs to be an intimate and and um, uh, a, a, an intimate time with yourself and the Holy Spirit, please don't feel obliged. But let us pray. Let us go into a time of prayer in Jesus name. Father Lord, I just lift us up this morning into your hands and I ask that you just cleanse our hearts and our minds father lord of everything father lord that is keeping us stagnant that is keeping us in a place father lord of past that is keeping us in a place here father lord where you are moving Amen. Jesus, my God, as we sit, stand, my Father God, from where we are, my Father, we just ask, my Father God, that you just identify, my Father God, every and my Father God, from the depths of the Lord Jesus, as we release, oh Lord. We don't want to hold. We don't want to hold anything in my father. We don't want to be wasted. We don't want to be my father God in a place where it is my father God as we rock. We are being drawn down. We are being literally my father God drawn back, my father God. But we want to be able, my father God, to go all the way with you, my love Jesus. So we just ask my Father God in the name of Jesus that you, Lord, my Father God, is able, my Father God, to remove anything, my Father God, that is chipping away, my God, at where we are to be with you. Let it be, my Father God, taken away. Let it roll away at this instance, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, my God. We choose to step correct. We choose to walk Walk correct, my father. We choose to do you right, Lord, so we can bring glory and honor, my God, to your name, Father Jesus. My God, take everything, my father. Take it all, Lord Jesus, my father. Sit upon it and within it, my father. As we aim, my father, God, just to make you proud, make you smile, but be able to conquer, my father, God, every form of spiritual every form of spiritual ambush my father god we just declare my father god your victory upon it my father because we refuse to remain the same way we refuse my father god to remain in the same place my father we want to go over we want to go over my father Father Lord, and be made for the Lord, mm -hmm. be made for the Lord, apparent for the Lord to our eyes that you open our spiritual eyes, Father Lord, and our ears, and Father Lord, that truth, Father Lord, your truth, Father Lord, and only your truth will set us free in Jesus' mighty name, so that we are ready, Father Lord, to step in alignment with you. We are yes. ready to take that shift, Father Lord, in mm -mm. Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Okay, so I'll hand it off to you. Take your prayer point, Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you, Minister Nikki. <laughs> Mm. Ah. <laughs> I just want to start off by just saying that it's um the way how God just unifies a thing is so beautiful 
Amen. Me and Mr. Nikki, we've not even, um, I had no idea what it is that God was going to allow her to release today. But in everything that she said, and with what it is that God has laid on my heart, you're going to literally just see how, how amazing God just unifies a thing, especially for the purpose of an assignment in a really heightened way. Amen. Because literally, God took me to Genesis, Nikki. God took me to Genesis. Amen. Different person in Genesis, but God took me to Genesis. And I'm just going to just literally just allow God to just speak in and through. And I just want to just say to everyone on here, seriously, with everything that was spoken and everything that God has said in the very depths of what it is that Mr. Nikki has literally released onto you, please take note. Take note of the things that, for instance, maybe really just resonated towards you and your situation. And if you've not made a note of it, make a note of it now. But please do just let it resonate highly within you because I just I feel I feel high <laughs> right now. So I'm just going to ask God to just help me to just stay on pace and just so that I can just really just link everything with what it is that the spirit of God is just saying, especially as it's been passed over to me um, like a baton. Amen. So I first of all, I just want to say that. Um, and I'm just going to literally just kind of like take it for where Minister Nikki left off. And then you're going to just see how, how this prayer point that um, I've got on my heart is literally going to be like iron for iron. Amen. With what Minister Nikki has released. So I think for me, it's a case that let's just be real. Let's just really break it down like even, even more so. And I think for me, it's a case that shift in itself, when you think of a shift in itself, it is about moving from it's when something moves from one place to another okay it is moving from one place to another so I just want you to just kind of like visualize and just also just picture so moving from one place to another and what we have to bear in mind is the case that fair enough like on the natural you can move from one place to another but we know that everything happens spiritually before it takes place naturally so ultimately it, it's you're moving from one place let me just think about you just stepping one, one side on your left and then you're stepping one side on your right. So you're actually moving from one place to another. But then it's a case that shifts and, I've, and, and the way Mr. Nikki highlighted this so loud, I, got, I have to take it from there. Shifts can actually take place in two forms. And there's two main forms of shift, main forms or let's say main ways in which a shift can take place. And shifts can be either expected or unexpected. And I just want you to make note, write it down or just let it resonate upon you. But shifts in itself, it can be something that is expected or unexpected. And I believe the way how Mr. Nikki laid down about Abraham, like me, it, it was just so profound. And I'm just going to take it from there because when you think about Abraham in itself, he had expected shifts and he had unexpected shifts. One of the most, let's say, expected shifts, if we're just, just kind of highlight, is the fact that he moved from Ur to Canaan. You know, I mean, God said, and you know, God showed him, and he moved from Ur to Canaan. But he also had an unexpected shift. And that unexpected shift, if I'm to use as an example, was the one that Minister Nikki laid out regarding Isaac. He didn't know that was going to happen. It was unexpected. But the way how he dealt with it, especially as Minister Nikki highlighted it, he dealt with it, I mean, in a very, and I stress upon the word, very spiritual way. And to me, it takes one to know God. It takes one to have a relationship with God. It takes one to really be in a form of intimacy with God, to be able to move the way how he did, especially when it came to his son and to be asked to sacrifice your son. Amen. That was an unexpected shift. So I'm saying that shifts can happen in the two forms, no more than two forms, expected and unexpected or if I'm to even say the word it can happen suddenly <laughs> and it can just happen do not mean it can happen suddenly and it can happen not mean not suddenly amen and it's the unexpected shift that I'm just going to spend two minutes on let me just try and spend two minutes on that because the unexpected shift in itself is the one where let's say the rain falls suddenly <laughs> you can be there and the rain just suddenly falls the unexpected shift in itself is the one, for instance, where like, you know, what I mean, you're just walking in sunshine, but all of a sudden the storm just comes in. And when that happens, sometimes your wig gone, your dress fly up. 
it's like you're walking along a pavement if you know where you got like these um they call it what they call it in Jamaica I forgot they, when you got potholes and all this kind of stuff you see water start splash up on you it's like do you know what I mean it's unexpected and it's like those ones are the ones for real where you get to really show what you're made of but you also get to show who you really are in Christ for real and that's why when even Abraham went through that unexpected shift then man that really showed not only just for, for instance as many say the, the love that he had but it showed and it declared and made such an announcement spiritually and also in the in the in the in the spiritual realm but also in the natural that you know what he is like before God amen because of the way how he handled up himself within that unexpected shift amen but the thing is right and this is the thing because in order for you to be able to really withstand in that unexpected shift right it really does require you to be spiritually ready you have to be spiritually ready because if you're not spiritually ready that shock will take you man I've gone through some shifts this year that were unexpected. And I'm being honest, if I did not know God, I would have stumbled and fall. If I didn't know God or even have as much as even, not even intimate, but if I didn't even have a relationship with God, when those unexpected shifts can take place, when all of a sudden something boom shows up in your face, if you are not someone that is spiritually ready, as the woman of God said regarding the 10 virgins, when that thing spies up in your face, next thing you know, you start to shake. You will start to stumble. Next thing you start, you start to go to things in the natural. Next thing you know, you see Tom, Dick and Harry from the past flirting your face. Then next thing you know, you start to fall back up into sin and all this kind of stuff. If you are not always spiritually ready, then when these unexpected shifts start to take place up in your face, up in your circumstance, up in your situation, your head gone. You were mad old. You will end up stumble up yourself. You will end up start swearing if you don't even know how to swear before. You will start to end up put yourself into certain things that you don't know. You will start to borrow. You will start to go into all kind of thing because it's unexpected. And then because your relationship ain't tight and because everything around you inwardly, outwardly is just loose, you will end up getting yourself knotted up and tied up into things that not only are you they're dealing with the shift you're dealing with the things that you've got yourself bound up in the unexpected shift is the one that's why we have to always be spiritually ready I have to always be spiritually ready because you don't know the unexpected will come for everyone there ain't nobody on this call and there ain't nobody that is exempt you will face it but the question is when you face it and how do you walk through it is dependent going back and just linking with the minister Nikki has said there it is dependent on how your inward self is and what is taking place on the inside of you especially when it comes to your level of surrender and nature of God because if everywhere in you is actually surrendered and anchored to God no matter what takes place there will be peace you will see the truth in the thing there was nothing that showed with Abraham that he was all over the place the man just step walk do step walk do step walk do no question ask can we be like him absolutely yes but it does take relationship it does take intimacy but it does take that level of spiritual readiness within amen we're talking about shifts and we're talking about the fact that it can be expected and unexpected and i just highlighted regarding an un how how those unexpected shifts if you don't know up yourself it will actually hit you in the face and it's those that are ready that will end up really being able to walk through it smiling and then that's when you can that's when you can say that you know what your smile is your weapon that's when you can say that your praise itself is your weapon and the people thinking why are you smiling why is it you going on like that but then there is a peace from the inside sir there is a peace from the inside madam that no matter what it is that i get thrown up into you smile and that becomes your weapon to the enemy amen
unexpected shifts. Hey, it takes spiritual readiness to be able to deal with them. So you've got the expected ones and you've got the unexpected one as a whole. And um, if I'm to pull it into another way, because I like using the word suddenly for those that know me, but some shifts, they can happen suddenly, all of a sudden, boom, you know, I mean, and like I said, I've been thrown into stuff this year and I thought, geez, what? Huh? And all of a sudden, you know what I mean? It's like, that me, you ain't got time to put on your shoes, you put on your dummy, let's you know, two twos, you're in a shift. You know what I mean? And then you're in there now thinking, Lord, how am I going to get myself? You know what I mean? Everything on the natural side, but then spiritually, you're ready. Spiritually, you're saying, yes, sir. Spiritually, you're saying, yes, Lord. But naturally, you feel all over the place because you're thinking, I didn't do this, I didn't prepare. No. So it's like God was bring it into certain things and say, eh, hey. Not mean. Now I can see what you're made of. Now I can see what you're about. Amen. Those are those unexpected shifts, man. It takes spiritual readiness to be able to really deal with them and to be able to really walk into those ones. But yeah, so suddenly, let me just keep myself on track. I'll just kind of aid my mind right now in the name of Jesus. But it's a case that so suddenly, yes, it can happen suddenly. And it's a case that where I'm coming from with my prayer point, and it really is just really this because yes, it can happen suddenly. But at the same time, it's a thing like some shifts, you can see, you can see the shift spiritually. Okay, so let me just kind of stress there because this is where my prayer point's coming from. So it's a case that your shift can actually happen suddenly. Okay, like I mentioned, unexpected. But your shift at the same time, you can, there are some shifts that you're able to see in advance. You're able to see some shifts spiritually. And so my prayer point is centered around spiritual sight, amen. So if you can write it down, please write it down. If you can't write it down, just say it aloud. But my prayer point is actually centered around spiritual sight. And so the core question is, what do you see spiritually? And I always say this, and I'm gonna say it again, because what you see, you magnify. Okay, let me just rub my eye. <laughs> what you see, you, I mean, what, what you actually see in itself, you will magnify it. And then what you actually, I mean, and what you, and you speak, you will speak what you see. You will speak what you see. And there may be things sometimes that you are shown, or there may be things sometimes that you see that, you know what? It may even look uncomfortable when you look at it from the surface. And then it's like, let me just um, use Jesus as an example, because, you know, I mean, when he was told, can you imagine when he was told you and when he was shown that, you know, I'm going to have to die for mankind and you'd be resurrected. You know, think about that huge shift. Imagine being aware and having that knowing it's it's not something that's comfortable. It's not comfortable at, at all. You know what I mean? In fact, it's actually uncomfortable. But essentially, if God showed you that, okay, we're talking about spiritual sight and so forth, you know what I mean? If God showed you that, you, you know what I mean? It's that knowing from the deep, deep place inside that you know what? He, he, he will carry you through it. Because sometimes we're shown certain things that we back away. And I might be speaking to someone here on the call when God is showing you something really big and like, ah, that ain't for me. But then it's like, if he showed you it, he will make you go through it and he will take you through it. Because sometimes he may show you something that's quite big and it might be out of you. You might be like, I ain't even got that character. That ain't even me. But it's about knowing for a fact that if it's definitely from him and the knowing that he will carry you through that, he will take you through it, carry you through it. And he will mold you into that because at the end of the day, do you know what I mean? He's the one that was the one that showed you. And it was God the Father that showed Jesus literally that, i.e. you die for mankind and resurrect. He held on to that and he was able to see that through in the natural, amen. Now the Bible quite clearly says that we should live by faith. You should live by faith and not by sight. And when these, the Bible talks about sight, it's talking about physical. We should live by faith, okay? faith faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen we should live by faith and not by sight so again what do you see spiritually 
what do you see spiritually? There are some shifts that you just need to see in the spirit, man. And then when you see it in the spirit, you have to speak it, speak it into existence. Right? You have to speak it into existence. And this is why I said I love the way how God unifies because he took me to Genesis, but he took me to Joseph. Amen. He took me to Joseph. So I'm just going to literally just read. I've only got two verses because I'm just itching to pray. Amen. So I think for me, it's the case that in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, verse 37, and I'm just going to literally just read a couple of verses here. Amen. If you're with me, just say amen on the chat. But if you're just with me, just not me, literally just kind of stay in tune with what it is that God is um, unveiling right now. So John, Genesis 37, verse 5 to 8, it says this. Joseph had a dream. And when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. Amen. So he saw, I say in the spirit, okay? Remember, I'm talking about spiritual sight. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and about speaking what it is that you see. And not just any little thing. Speaking what it is that God shows you. So Joseph had a dream. And when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. And he said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brother said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. Amen. And if we know the story really well, for those of us on the call, we know for a fact that, do you know what I mean, further, further on and everything like that, the enemy tried to block Joseph's, enemy will always try to block him, try to block Joseph's dream. And it's like his brothers, they sold him to, over to the Midianites and then they sold him to Egypt. They sold him in Egypt, sorry, to part of fire and everything like that. And he just went through trials and tribulations there, but he held on to what it is that God said. And he held on to, you know what I mean, what it is that God said and showed him within those dreams. Amen. We're talking about spiritual sight, speaking what it is that you see. And then further on, if we go to Genesis 39, verse two, amen. Genesis 39, verse two, let's get ourselves there. Genesis, Genesis 39, verse two says this, amen. So imagine they sold him on, so man, no jealousy, all of that kind of stuff. I mean, man's there speaking what it is that God showed him and he's speaking it there into existence. That's why when God is showing you something, you know that it's from God. He's speaking into existence. In the day, it's from God. And it's a case that he was there speaking insistence. They sold him on to the Midianites. I'm just repeating. They sold him. They did not, I mean, they literally sold him in Egypt to put a fire. He was there, went for all these trials and tribulations as mentioned, and then literally, this is it, and I think this is the bit I want to really kind of draw on. The Bible says in Genesis 39, verse 2, it says, the Lord was with Joseph. Amen. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered, and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. Amen. The Lord was with Joseph. <laughs> The Lord was with him. So you can imagine all the things that he went through. If you think about it, I mean, sometimes it's, it's good when we can try to put ourselves in their shoes. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you grow up with your family, so, you know, your brother, so you're on, you're there going through your trials and tribulations, but you're still holding on to what it is that God showed you. You're still holding on to what it is that you saw. That mean that, that, that God showed you. That mean you're still there and you're like, you know, you're just bringing it, just holding, but really just going to the word that um, Nikki mentioned. It has an anchor, you know, you're anchoring stuff in that and there for that in the word that God is giving you towards your dream. You know what I mean? But God, throughout it all, God was with him and he prospered there in Egypt and his dream, as we know, it came to pass. And so what I really want to just kind of highlight, especially with this point, we're talking about spiritual sight, amen? Like when God has actually designed shifts in your life, despite the trials and despite the tribulation, despite everything that flies up in the midst, despite the mess, despite the amount of times you end up falling down, you draw back, you come forward, all of that kind of stuff, nothing can block it. Once you actually really hold the faith and once you believe fully in what it is that you have been shown, nothing will block, nothing, nothing can. Anyone can only try, it's a defeated foe, anyone can try. But nothing, nothing can block it, right? 
because when God really designs the shifts in your life, it will definitely take you to another level. So of course, enemy's going to try. He wants you to stay on one level your whole entire life, always to be on level one, never wants you to go up to level 10, always on level one, he would want you to. But when God desires shifts in your life, it does take you to another level. And when God really designs, let's say, shifts in your life, it, it doesn't only bless you, but it also blesses others, as we even know with the story of Joseph, amen? But to be actually prepared for shifts, I'm just adding to the list that Nikki beautifully started. To be prepared for shifts, you need to be, you need to be aware, man, that the enemy will always fight against you. He will always fight against you, but he is defeated. You know what I mean? And sometimes, and this is the thing, he will always fight, he would, he will always try to fight against you because ultimately in the knowing of where that shift is going to take you and how the threat you're going to be to him and the devils and demons, amen. But it's a case that sometimes God also permits things to take place to test you before getting to the next level. And this is where we have to have discernment, which is what Minister Nikki said. But this is where we have to have understanding because, yes, there are some things that from a hindrance perspective, the enemy will block, ambush. He will play like mind games. He'd always want to try to find a way in because remember, he can't touch you unless you allow him to. He will always do all of that kind of stuff, which is why, again, drawing upon what I said earlier, you've got to be spiritually ready. Put on your full armor. Some of us are fighting battles and we ain't got no helmet on. So therefore, our minds and our ears are just always open to certain suggestions from the enemy we've got to make sure that we have our full armor on and especially our helmet is fully in place because that is the one place he likes to start with suggestions and saying things in our head and do you know I mean? and so that we can end up believing it when you believe it you're done because you start to believe it then you start to speak it, all of this kind of stuff but to be prepared you have to know for a fact that enemy will fight You'll definitely fight. <laughs> but then again, just like I said, some things are literally just tests. Like with Isaac, it was a test. Sometimes we're so quick to say the enemy, but when it came to Isaac and it was different like that, that was a, that, that was a test. Do you know what I mean? And something, and this is where we have to kind of discern. But when you're spiritually ready, you know God's voice. And it was like that. You, you're just, you're just, mm, you're ready to set, which is why, again, I'm going to keep stressing that word spiritual readiness. <laughs> So that really, like, no matter when you're at actually that stage with that kind of spiritual it's like, no matter what is thrown at you, do you know what I mean? You will just, there will be a kind of way you act, even outside of yourself. You would even know how you would act that way. I say to people sometimes, if there was a gun put in your head, do you know how you're going to react? You know what I mean? Some of us, oh my gosh, you see in movies, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh gosh. But then ultimately, do you know what I mean? If it were, it's like, if you were, let's say, I don't know, 11, 12 o'clock midnight or whatever it may be, and a gun's put to your head, not me, and you're someone that has got spiritual readiness, I'm telling you, you'll probably be very surprised how you would react. Very, su very surprised how you'd react. You know what I mean? You might not even say a word. I mean, that's, and because the Spirit of God is upon you so much, the person would just probably end up, drop their gun and just go. Or you might just end up speaking tongues. <laughs> and the person will have to flee. They will have to flee, yeah? But it's a case that, do you know what I mean? When you've got that spiritual readiness, man, it prepares you for any situation at all, man. And then it's like, you may even, you'll be even surprised how you were at because it's like, the, because the spirit of God is in control because you've surrendered to him. Does that mean you would act even outside of, even outside of how you would even think. Amen. But when you're in that kind of stance and you do have that level of spiritualness within you, again, no matter what's thrown at you, man, you, that mean you just, you hold on to what God has said. You hold on to what God has shown you, what you see, and you will magnify it in the spirit. Does that mean along with anchoring in his word? Amen. You will see, speak what you see, but you will hold on to it and along with the anchoring of his word. Amen. So I'm just going to give a very brief example and then we're going to go into prayer because it's into prayer. Amen. So it's like, God showed me, and some of you know this testimony and some may not, but I'm just going to share it because it's, um, it really does link with what it is that God really laid in my heart to share with you all today. So God showed me that I was going to have a child at 33. So for those of you that knew me from my teens and from, for instance, my early 20s or even my late 20s, that mean, it was something that God showed me in spirit. And because he showed me in it, I would always speak it. I always knew that I was going to have a child at 33. And so when I turned 32 
and this I'm talking about expected shift here okay because we said there's expected and unexpected so this to me was an expected shift so at 32 I knew this was going to be an expected shift so essentially at 32 I'm thinking oh my gosh I'm one year away from having I was like literally saying to my husband oh my gosh it's next year you know and then what did I do? When you have, when you've like, for instance, it's an expected shift, you move, you get yourself ready, naturally, prepared naturally, but spiritually there's that readiness. Why? Because God has already shown you in this life. So there's that kind of inner peace, it doesn't mean, but then ultimately on the natural side, because you've already been shown it, you start getting yourself ready. So I started to buy up stuff because I'm thinking, whoo, I'm going to have a child by a 33. But what happened is the fact that when I first um, got pregnant, then what happened is the fact that I had, I had a miscarriage. And I'm going to be honest, it's like God gave me a promise. He showed me something. And then I had a miscarriage. And it's like, there's so many things that literally, like in that split second, like, you know, you start to feel like, God, God promised, you know, and it's like, you hold, God promised. And what really took me through that particular time, and I'm be honest, I'm just going to be real with you. I did cry. I'm, I'm, of course, I'm human, amen, essentially. So I did cry and everything like that. But then I held on. What really took me through is the fact that I knew what God showed me. Amen. This is what I'm talking about, spiritual sight. And, I, and when you know that God has shown you, and again, going back to relationship, I know that God is a God that don't fail. I know for a fact that God is a God that when he says he's going to do a thing, he will do. So despite the fact that I had that miscarriage and everything like that, I held on to what God showed me and I anchored in his word. And so the scripture, which is my favorite scripture that I always hold on to, is the fact that when you trust God, he will never disappoint. When you trust God, he will never put you to shame. And I was like, God, not me. I just kept myself anchored in that throughout the entire time. And then essentially, very soon afterwards, I ended up becoming pregnant again. And I ended up having my first child in the same year that God had said, very free. Amen. And so in the midst of the shift, does that mean, especially after I gave birth to my child, um, there was so much things that changed. That's why I said when the shift takes place, it does take you to another level because my tongue started to change. I, my prayer life heightened. Um, I started to discern differently. Wisdom increased. I started to become more aware of people and even situations around me in a really heightened way. There was so much like there was so much that came with it and then I thought geez no wonder like the fire boy because I could have almost lost my blessing if I had changed my mouth and I could have lost my blessing if I ended up becoming spiritually blinded to what it is that I knew that God had said you know what I mean or if I ended up doubting all of those kind of things can end up delaying or just ended up changing the course of things do you know what I mean especially when God has said something onto you so it's a case that when you actually, does that mean, to go through shifts, it really does take you to another level, but you got to really just hold on to what it is that God has shown you and really just anchor in this word to take you through. Amen. So just to recap, because we're going to go into prayer, because to be actually prepared, and remember those two key words that we said at the very, very beginning, prepared and the word shift, to actually be prepared spiritually, does that mean, like, you always, you always have to be spiritually ready. Not me. We read loads of scripture in the Bible that talks about this and everything like that. People say you don't know when. Not me. You grow up and people say you don't know when God's coming. It's true. You just have to. You have to be ready. You know what I mean? It's no point there. Do you know I mean chilling out and sin and drying up yourself doing all this kind of stuff? You don't know when God's. You don't know when you, when your time's up. You have to be spiritually ready, man. Do not mean you have to be spiritually ready and be sensitive to God. And if in fact, you know, if you do so, do so. That me come come back into Him. God is love. That means he don't want you to end up die in that, or as some people say, die in your winter season, all that kind of stuff. Come get into him. Do you know what I mean? Because you don't know. That's what people say, repent, repent. You don't know. It's important because that, do you know what I mean? It's really, really important. And that's why it's, it's important to just make sure that you're kind of, you're spiritually ready. If you ran away, come back to God, man. You know what I'm saying? God would have an open arms for real. But it's a case that we have to be spiritually ready. And remember what it is that the woman of God said about the 10 virgins. So it's we really have to be spiritually ready. Okay, that's number one. Number two, it's important that you speak what you see. We're talking about how is it that we end up being prepared spiritually. So always be spiritually ready. Number two, speak what you see. 
but more importantly, speak what it is that God has shown you. Okay. I think thirdly, if I'm to say is like the enemy will try to block it. We have to discern because the enemy will try to block it, block whatever it, your shift. He will definitely try to block your shift in various different ways. Sometimes you even have your, sometimes a, a thing that someone very close to you. Do I mean you've got to be careful of certain things that you're hearing from even those in your ass? Because you might be like, I don't really have no friends and stuff like that. Even somewhere in your ass, if they're not converted and stuff, the enemy can use them to say something to you that keeps you literally paralyzed where you are. And you don't even realize it. So you have to discern, amen? Because the enemy will always try to block you from going upwards and use all kinds of things to keep you stagnant. But the enemy will try to block it. Or sometimes God will test you. And some of us, we keep failing tests failing test you're never passing the exam you're there with your book and everything like that you get test after test every time it's a grade f grade f you're not getting the grade a because you're not realizing that this is a test do you know what i mean so the god will test your faith no matter don't mean no matter what way and but if he does and when he does you have to throw my arm you have to hold on to what god has shown you you have to hold on to what God has shown you. And when you do that, you'll not only just survive, but you'll thrive. But you have to really hold on to what it is that God has shown you. Go through the test and you have to hold on to what it is that, like, who, like how you know God, who you know God, and what it is that God has really shown you. And even when the enemy does his madness and all that kind of stuff, anchor in the word of God. That mean use the authority that it is that you have in your hand. And just be able to just remember what it is that God showed you deep within, no matter how no matter how rough it may be, no matter what you lose in the midst of it, anchor in the word of God, hold on by faith to what it is that God has shown you. And you'll see the same way as God said, I mean, in, in, in that verse that I've read with you, I mean, God was with Joseph the whole way through. Sometimes you may not even feel like it at some point because sometimes God puts us in a situation where there's no human help available. You might be in no human help available, no one to turn to but God, you just go, mm. Only God, he's with you throughout the situation, amen? So I just want you to hold on to that. And I think lastly, it's more just a case that make sh- just make sure that your armor is on, man. You have to make sure your armor is on. And that just kind of links back to being spiritual ready. Make sure that your armor is fully on. Every area, amen, because Emmy will always try to look for a gap. But I think the main one, as I keep always stressing on all the time, but is that helmet. Make sure because some people run into battle, they've got everything, da-da-da, sword, all of that stuff. Make sure your helmet's on. Amen. So my prayer point is for us to pray against spiritual blindness. And to just pray against doubt, amen? So if someone could write that in the chat because I want us to really anchor really properly in prayer. It's about us praying against spiritual blindness and doubt because those are really two big hindrances that God really laid in my heart that I think is really just affecting a lot of people, especially when it comes to shifts. It's spiritual blindness and just doubt because when you can't see where God is taking you, you you stumble and you just become stagnant. It's like, God's like, this, like, I want you to get to out of that chapter. You've been in that chapter in your life for so many years. I want to get you out of that. But it's like, you can't see. You're too, like, it's like the whole Martha and Mercy tree. You're too involved and in getting too caught cool up in certain things that's happening in that chapter. And God's like, I want you to see above that. I want you to see beyond that. I want, I, I, I've literally laid out the path. I've literally laid out the way for you to get out. But you're so consumed in that chapter chapter get out of that chapter do you know what I mean but when you can't see spiritually you start seeing naturally and then you're stuck you know so it's a big one so we want to be able to pray against spiritual blindness in the name of Jesus and the other one is regarding doubt because you will never move to your next chapter if in your life if you if you know what I mean you will never move to the next chapter in your life if you're doubting no way God says this, really? And then like, or you confess it naturally, but inwardly you're like, no, that's not, that ain't for me. Or you start doubting it because of like, maybe like negative, like, you know, some negative beliefs that you have, like, you know, inwardly and all of that kind of stuff. And you're doubting, you know what I mean? It's like, we're all there holding hands and we're there praying aloud and people even go in tongues, kick, 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 kick. Ke, 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 ke. When deep down, you, I mean, you don't, you don't, you doubt. 
and it's just so easy to kind of get you off track and the enemy knows these kind of stuff he knows who's who yeah so it's a fact like doubt will definitely hinder you from going into your shift and if you're someone that's in your shift and it's like you know you're just walking around in your shift and you're trying to kind of like you know what I mean grow in your shift to be able to even make it to your next level shift and so forth and you've got these seeds of doubt in you there's only so far you can go only so far you can go what that mean and you'll never end up seeing God's anointing being manifested you will not see his anointing be manifested and then we have to understand that when the anointing of God when the anointing of God is manifested man it breaks everything it breaks shackles it breaks yokes it breaks literally past failures it breaks doubts it breaks spiritual blood I mean it will break everything when you when the anointing of God is just there and it's able to be manifested but when you have these things like doubts and spiritual blindness you will never never ever 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 see this anointing manifest Mm -mm. so prayer point let's pray against spiritual blindness and let's pray against doubts amen so if you're someone that's on this call right now like I said this isn't a call just for those who just kind of listen in it's about unveiling allowing God to expose certain things it's about you recognizing where you are in your season it's about you recognizing for, for like for real for real for real where it is that you know what I need to correct and all of that kind of stuff that we go in place especially on the inside amen but if you are someone that is really up on this call and you want to shift and let's say you want to go deeper and if you're just tired of where you are and tired of literally being in that same chapter tired of playing that me just playing ball games with the enemy for sure I just want you to be able to open up your mouth just come off mute if you can and I think as Mr. Nicky quite nicely said I mean if there's something the case that you want to just kind of do intimately just on your own you can stay on mute but if you're someone that is able to come off mute and you're, if you're able to just kind of like join with me in this prayer let's pray again doubt and spiritual blindness right now in the mighty name of Jesus so let's just take a few minutes to do so and then we go on to the third and final prayer point in Jesus name amen name of Jesus my God my God my God Hey, Lord, we just want to say unto you, my Father God, thank you, my Father God, for what it is that you have spoken, my Father. Because, my God, we are in a time right now, my God, that is not a time for playing. We're in a time right now, my Father God, where we don't want to just be, my Father God, but we want to become. My Father God, we say unto you, my Father God, that we are refusing, my Father God, to be in the same thing. We are refusing, my Father God, to be. My father, God, no one, my God, to take a step forward and to take a step back, my father. My God, you know, my father, God, everything, my God, that is taking place. You know what the enemy, my father, God, has tried to come up in one's life, my father. You know the manipulation. You know the back of my God. You know, my God, the things that I dare, my father, God. You know the name, my father, God, I'm a father. I want to hit my father, God, I want to Every time they open up the eyes, my father. But today, my father, God, we say no more. Today, my father, we say my father, God, that we don't want to be my father, God, a puppet. We don't want to be my father, God, God. We don't want to be my father, God, I'm projecting. I'm beautiful, my father. But we want to go forward up in you, my Lord. We want to go higher. We want to go higher. We want to go a fire in you, my father God. Because your word says that great are the plans that you ask for us, my father God. My father God is a liar. In the name of Jesus, my God. If there's any fire upon someone's eyes, my father. In the name of Jesus, my God. We pray that if you remove at this instant, my God. In the name of Jesus, my God, if there is anyone, my Father God, upon this poor, my Father God, that is dealing with doubt, my God, something may have been said, something 
Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much, Prophet Asalika, and God bless you. That was a perfect addition. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us. That was a perfect addition to what the Holy Spirit has already started to lay out. And I pray that each and every one of us that's on this call today was able to make notes in some way. Um, and take heed as as was said this is this is so profound and powerful and we need to be ready we need to be ready for the shift um whilst i was just looking on the prayer point that i'm about to the the scripture i'm about to read um as a foundation to the prayer point the third prayer point um 
those that drew my attention to um, another passage in Luke, and it's Luke. Um, sorry, one second. It's Luke 9 from 1, and I'll just briefly read it. And the reason why he drew it to my attention was kind of revealed to me a little bit um, further as Prophetess was speaking a little bit more into going into sort of like her prayer point and the foundation of her prayer point. So the scripture reads Luke 9, verse 1, and he called the 12 together and gave them power and authority over all demons to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and heal. And he said to them, Take nothing for your journey, no staff, no bag, nor bread, nor money, and do not have two tunics. So basically he's saying to the 12 disciples, go with what you have on your back only. But he has given them, God, Jesus has given them the power and authority over all demons and spread diseases. But they shouldn't take anything, no material things, nothing, not, nothing that's going to um, ensure their comfort, their safety, um, for them to be fed, absolutely nothing. So the Holy Spirit to me said, this is a test. This is a test for them. You know, they've got this far and Christ sent them out to go and do the work. And um, it goes back to my initial prayer point was going to be read for, is going to be read from um, Luke 9, I think it's 59. Let me just double check. Luke 9, 59, yes. So it says to another, he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. And 60, it says, and Jesus said to him, leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. So when I was looking up on that last night, leave the dead to bury the dead. We say it, we, 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 we've read it in the scripture and um, we've read it with, in, 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 with regard to the man burying his father. So we know that his father's dead. We know that Jesus meant dead in the literal sense. But when we think about it and we broaden that meaning, it can be applied to every area of our life. The things that are not of the spirit are dead. The things that are not of the spirit are dead. Even the foods that we eat to, to nourish our physical bodies, bodies are dead. Our physical body without the spirit of God is spiritually dead. So the things that are not of the spirit are dead. So leave the dead to bury their own dead. So the things that are not of the spirit, we shouldn't, we shouldn't um, hold on to them. We shouldn't not even close on our back. You know, we shouldn't, we should not place them things, those things above what we have to do for the kingdom, what we have to do, you know, in the spirit. It says, um, take nothing for your journey, no staff, nor nor bag, nor bread, nor money, and do not have two tunics. And whatever house you enter, stay there and from there depart. Wherever they, wherever, and wherever they do not receive you, when you leave that town, shake off the dust from your feet as a testimony against them. And Prophet Alicia said something, and it drew me to that um, specific passage. Wherever they do not receive you, when you leave the town, shake off the dust. She said, there are some things that you go through when they, no man can help you. There is no human help available. So Christ told them wherever you go that they do not receive you. He didn't say if they don't receive you. He said wherever you go. So he knew there were going to be some places where the people did not receive the 12. They were going to be left out with no food, no clothes, no bag, no money, nothing. They were going to be left out, even though they were doing the work of God. These men were going to be left out in um sort of like in a wilderness so to speak even though they were in towns and cities it would have been because they wouldn't have had anything to sustain them for that night or that period of time that they were there but he told them to go anyway he tells us to go because he knows that we have him and once we have him we have everything so just to reiterate hold on to the word hold on to Christ and let go of everything else he just drew me he just drew this to my attention just to cement where um where we were going in the teaching already um like i said the initial prayer point was going to be um founded on luke 9 59 where it says where he says where the man says that he wants to go and bury his father first and, and christ says let the dead bury, leave the dead to bury the dead so i'm just going to go back and read that again um Jesus said to him, leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. We don't only proclaim the kingdom of God with our mouth, with our words, but with our actions. 
with our thoughts, with our intentions. Everything we do must proclaim the kingdom of God. And that is our true and proper worship to live and give ourselves as a living sacrifice. If we have not sacrificed ourselves, we have not surrendered everything to God, all of us in us and outside of us, are we really doing the work of, are we proclaiming the kingdom? Are we glorifying God? So it says, yet another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say well, to, say farewell to those at home. So again, you can see that these, this man took it literally. When, when Christ said, um, let the dead go and bury their own dead, this man was like, oh, my family's not dead. They're still alive. Let me at least go and say bye to them. Jesus said, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. He's basically just revealing to me now that he is taking care of our families. He is taking care of the ones that we leave behind. It's, not, it's our job to proclaim the kingdom first and foremost. God, once we, we, once we are doing what we are purposed to do in him, God will take care of our families. God will take care of our loved ones. God will take care of our homes. He will take care of our livestock, our cattle, our jobs, our education, our money. He will take care of everything. So I reiterate, leave the dead to bury the dead. That's where the prayer point stems from. So the third prayer point, and just to add so that we're aware, um, thank God uh, um, he's given Minister Heather, Dr. Heather, um, a fourth prayer point. So after this one, we'll lead into the fourth prayer point. But our third prayer point stems from this scripture, this um, verse, leave the dead to bury their own dead so that we, as, as we surrender to Christ with our mouths, we will pray that not only it will it be a verbal or a vocal surrender, but it will be a heart surrender as well. It will be a heart posture. Our surrender and our submission and our holding onto him will be one that, is, like I said before, becomes our identity. It's not just something we say once and then we forget about because um, the latest um, pair of Jordans came out or whatever it is that, you know, tickles our individual fancies or whatever it is that we, um, we, we look for in life. Our identity will be to hold on and follow Christ. We will leave the dead to bury the dead. We will let God look after our families as we go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And everything else will be done unto us after we proclaim and, and seek the kingdom of God. So as we pray, now, the prayer point will be that um, the, any kind of hindrance, so one of the, the words that were um, raised today was hindrance, hindrance, any hindrance to us being ready for our shift, or our season of shift, be t torn down, that God tear them down, that we open up ourselves, that God can tear them down, that God can cleanse our hearts, that again, that um, even if we can't think of or even if we can't remember or even if it doesn't come to our mind the strongholds that we are experiencing or the hindrances that we are experiencing now that you know we ask God to unveil them for us this will be a moment where we really again come at our knee come down to our knees and say Holy Spirit help me reveal these hindrances to me so that I can renounce them once and for all and even though I say once and for all, it will not be a once and for all because the enemy will continue to suggest. As Prophetess Elisa says, once we, you know, once we start speaking and declaring, the enemy will still come and make these suggestions. He will, because the, the closer that we are to our destiny, to our um, walking in our purpose, he starts getting riled up. He starts getting shaken. He's like, oh, no, 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 no. I can't let that one go. I can't let that one go. You will find that the closer you are and the more intimate, um, you're, the, more, the more you commit and submit, the more you declare that you are committed and you are submitted and surrendering to God, to the word of God, the more the enemy wants to rise up and try and take you down because he's, he's now in defense. He's now feeling like, oh, I'm going to lose this one. I'm going to lose this one. When you were never, he's in the first place to lose. So we're going to start off this prayer by asking the Holy Spirit to reveal to us those hindrances, those strongholds that we're experiencing that are stopping us from really anchoring ourselves to the word. Because if we, um, going off the back of, and like Prophetess Elisa said, we, we didn't discuss this prior to the meeting, but I thank God for just speaking so loudly and moving the way that he does. Because even off the back of having spiritual sight and him opening our spiritual eyes, if 
he can open our spiritual eyes to certain things but if we are not even aware he will show us these things but if we are not even aware to ask and we're not seeking they might come a little bit later than for example if you dedicate the time and the space spiritually to be in fellowship with him and asking him okay show me these things they may come a little bit later then if you sit down and ask you might something might come up to your remembrance today in the midst of prayer that such and such happened when you were 10 or 16 or 20 and you need to tear this down in the name of Jesus so as we go into this prayer point we're going to call out those names those strongholds and those hindrances we're going to call them out we're going to um we're going to ask God to tear them down and if we can't think of any we're going to ask God to bring to our remembrance um these things that are hindering us so that they can be torn down this is a process that will start from today and will continue because this one time will not be enough for some the enemy will continue to suggest so again while we surrender with our mouths the strongholds will loosen and we will no longer find ourselves bound by attachments that will hinder us but we have to ensure that we not only are we surrendering with our mouths but we're surrendering with our hearts too so the prayer point will be for the strongholds to loosen and the hindrances to shift and we will ask the holy spirit to reveal these to us that we are not currently aware of or that we do not remember um again those of you that can come off mute please do those of you that want to spend this time intimately um with the holy spirit please please do that also as we go into a time of prayer amen in jesus mighty name Father Lord, as we have sat here this morning, Father Lord stood now. Father Lord, Jesus Lord, we just come in our presence in our this morning, Father Lord. Try and Father Lord and 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 my god in the name of jesus my father as we are here my father god advancing in prayer mighty jesus i just come my father god in uniform my father god with everyone my father god that is upon this call lord and as we are advancing my father god we stand in the authority of jesus we stand in the authority of jesus my father to break down every hindrance to a shift in the mighty name of jesus my god we break my god every form of destiny altering image my father in the mighty name of jesus my god whatever it is that is there my father god that has been lingering that has been there my father god to keep us blocked and locked my father god in a chapter locked my father god in a way my father god in which my father god we feel like we're out but we are actually locked in my father my god i come against every form of illusion of the enemy my father every illusion that is there my father god that is false that is there my father god that makes one feel like act like but they're not my father god we ask my father god for the reality to be revealed right now and for every illusion curtain every illusion that is there my father god that's placed one as a puppet my god removed and shifted in the mighty name of jesus my god my father oh lord we come my father god and we pray against my father god every form my father god of demonic attachment my father my god once trying my god to progress because in you who want to step my god where you have told them to step my father but there is an attachment my father god that maybe even one doesn't know but it's there and it's there in the midst my father god that always rises up my father god at sudden moments and sudden times my father my god wherever the attachment is and wherever the attachment is coming from my father in 
the name of Jesus, my Father God, as we're gathered here today, we break those attachments in the mighty name of Jesus, my God, so that people can be loosed, loosed, my Father God, to go where you want them to go, loosed, to be able, my Father God, to do what is my Father God, required and required of them to do, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, my God. My Father God, we shatter, my Father God, every class of the enemy, whatever one looks in the service, my Father God, and there's a fear, my Father God, nothing greater, my Father God, but everything, my God, of a limited you. My God, we break down every food, my Father God, that is there, my Father God, that tries to make one feel as though, my Father God, that is the reflection, that is the false reflection, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, my Father. My God, we break every form of change, of the ancient pain, every chain that is there, my Father, that must be filled like my Father God, but they're not in the mighty name of Jesus, my God. My God, we dispossess, my Father God, the spirit, my God, of the enemy, my Father God, that I try to make one, my Father God, be my Father in a place, my Father God, of not just being tied up, but bound up in the name of Jesus, my Father. My God, we should fight them loose in the name of Jesus. Put them loose, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, my God. The very steps can be made forward, my Father, if you go into grace and higher places in you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, my Father. My Father, God, we overthrow every single and my Father. We come against every form of ambush that is there, my Father, so that, my Father, God, your people, children, my God, can be set fully free, Lord, in the name of Jesus, because we understand and know, my Father, God, that every is free in you, my God. Whatever it is, my Father, God, that has been there, my God, even when they're all free and the enemy makes them feel as though that they're not, my Father, God, we come against every feeling that is not of you. We come against everything in the mind sense that is not of you, my Father, God, in the name of Jesus, my God. God, let a divine intervention take place, my Father, right now. And let everything, my Father, God, that may have taken root prior to prayer, my God, be uprooted in the mighty name of Jesus. Come in, O oh Father, O oh God, and let your stance be known, my Father, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, Lord, we know only you can do this in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, set every foot away from us, Father Lord, that we may not, Father Lord, be distracted by the things around us and that our mind, our hearts will be on you. Hey. I will pass you on now to Dr. Carmen. I will. Amen. Jesus, mighty name. Amen. I think most of you guys have kind of touched on the point that the Holy Spirit gave me. I just wanted to do the closing <laughs> prayer, boy, but God is like, hello. Um, in Jesus' mighty name. And the prayer point that is um, my i'm going to come from is derailed shifts derailed shifts <clears throat> as um minister nikki was speaking and as um prophetess elisi was speaking as well the holy spirit just kept speaking out loud about derailed shifts now we know that there's shifts that the holy spirit will bring us into and then there are also shifts that the enemy a shift within a shift amen You'll be walking and you're walking towards the shift that the Holy Spirit is bringing you into. And then the enemy will come somehow to try to derail you and cause you to go into a, a different type of shift. Amen. That is way out of sync with where the Holy Spirit is going into. Amen. The Bible states that, you know, why start something in spirit and end up in flesh? 
finish it and you know complete it in flesh so uh, i'm not going to talk too much but the holy spirit did definitely say that we need to pray against that and the main root of that comes from unresolved issues with our own identity amen it's important that when the holy spirit calls us into something higher he doesn't just want to call us into a space amen but he wants to lift us into he wants to lift the person within us amen as in the, the, the our spiritual essence has to be in line with that that calling over our lives amen the bible says in james 1 8 that being undecided makes you become like the rough seas driven and tossed by the wind you're up and you are up one minute and tossed down the next when you are half-hearted and wavering, it leaves you unstable in all your ways. And can you really expect to receive anything from the Lord when you're in that condition? The Bible states in Ephesians 5.14 that will wake up from your sleep, climb out of your coffins. Christ will show you the light. So watch your step. Amen. There are many of us people, whoever's going to listen after and so forth, that the enemy has derailed from the specific shift that the Holy Spirit um, has called us into. And the biggest scripture that he kept showing me as the, as the teaching was going on and forth was 1 Kings 13, the old prophet and the man of God. God had told the man of God to shift. He said, and in specific instruction was don't eat a crumb, don't drink a drop and don't come back the way you came, amen. He had an instruction. He was supposed to deliver a word. The Holy Spirit or God saw him fit at that time to go and deliver a word, amen, against the leadership and things that was going on in that town. And bearing in mind, the old prophet was um, still regarded in his town, but God brought forth someone outside of that town to go forth and send a word. And when word came forth, the Bible states that, first of all, Someone came first to the to, to the to the man of God to say, oh, why don't you eat? Oh, your journey is long. All these kind of things, as Prophet Salisa said, the suggestions that came. And he was like, no, God told me specifically that I'm not supposed to. And he repeated it. Amen. But when the old prophet came, he said, an angel told me I was also given the same word. So why don't you just come with me? Come to my house. Let's eat. Let's drink and so forth. Amen. An instruction was given to this man of God to go forth. Amen. But with that um, instruction became a distraction and with every distraction becomes disgrace. The Holy Spirit is saying that we need to pray against the spirit of disgrace. When you are in conflict with your own self, with your own identity and with your own calling. God will give you an instruction and you will sabotage it. God will give you a, 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 um, an instruction and you will lie dead in that coffin and not able to come out because you're, you are uh, making, you know, you're, you're kind of having conversations with people that have no idea with what God has said, um, has said to you. Amen. So much words have been stated. Okay, this person may, um, you know, have, have done it many years before me. So let me wait. Let me follow the, the way that they have done their shift. Let me go the way the way they came from and stuff but the bible says there was a specific instruction given to this prophet this man of god amen and just because this this other person was a prophet in his town he regarded what um he said um against what god had said amen without even realizing amen that he was now walking in a sense of disobedience and walking in a sense of disgrace amen and the bible states that when he did that amen he um he got wrecked up and all sorts and stuff and he died and that old prophet came and uh, came with a horse he came to see whether he was really dead and he buried him amen and he went on his way amen the enemy will not like to see us fulfill that in which God is calling us into and he starts that by trying to to Still who we are to walk in a place of double-mindedness with who we are amen walking one minute we know who we are another minute we don't know who we are one minute we are identifying with the calling of our life 
another time we become numb to that that calling of our life amen and about and, and and i've been saying say it in this quite a lot now but i'm just going to repeat it here that there is no time to ask god who am i there's there is no time to be standing on the fence there is no time to be saying god what did you say again there is no time to be conversating with the old man in you to say lord you know are you sure it's me lord um, i'm not fit there is no time to say i'm not qualified there is no time to say that um um, um, I don't have enough experience. There's no time to say other people have done it before my time. There is no time to say, Lord, look at the things I've done in the past. There is no time to be undecided. Amen. There is no time to be asleep at this time. So if there is any area in, in you, in us, amen, that is unresolved with who we are, the Holy Spirit is saying today that make peace with that side of you. Amen. If there's a part of you, the old part of you that needs to grieve so that you can truly live and be in sync and be in line with where God is taking us to, then it's important that we say, Lord, look, I have to be honest today that there are voices that keep speaking to my head, speaking into my spirit, speaking into my heart about who I am. But Lord, help me give you a revelation of who I am. I'm relying on other people to speak unto me. I'm relying on a sign. I'm relying on a word. I'm relying on something just to say that you sent me. And this is what is happening where he sent, God has given him a specific word and one person came and he was confident. But when an old uh, prophet came, he became, um, what's the word? He shrunk. He, 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 he started to pay attention. Amen. And this is what happens sometimes that we start to follow voices that we feel that have gone ahead of us and we miss out on what God is saying. And then it derails us from where God is taking us to. Amen. It derails us. So we are in a shift. This man was in a shift. This man was called by God. This man was going to deliver a word. This, this man was a new, a new. Amen. He wasn't someone that people even knew, but there was, there, there was a message sent around to say there is someone that's about to deliver a word. And that's what the enemy does. He knows that when he, when you're already in your shift, he can't remove you from the shift, but he will derail you and he'll bring these demonic shifts within your spiritual shift. Amen. To move you aside and to kill that in which that seed that is already implanted within your soul, within your spirit to, to, so that it would, that you will not fulfill that in which God has, 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 um, that, that, that God has embedded or birthed or planted within you. Amen. And again, then we never had the testimony again of this guy. Why? Because he died. Amen. May this not be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. If there's anything of you that is still conflicted, you're still waiting for someone to affirm you. You're still waiting for a timing. You're still waiting for something to say, okay, God, now I can go. God is saying we are ready in a shift. There is a time for us to awaken our spiritual ears and be sensitive to that in which he's saying there is no time now to be like, let me wait for this and let me wait for that. There is no time to be sitting down in your prayer closets every second. It's time to shift. It's time to move. The shifting has already taken place, but it's for us to now stand up and elevate that part of us that is unresolved needs to come back into alignment right now. You just declare over your soul right now in the mighty name of Jesus that whatever is in me that is still low that is still numb to what God has called me to that we're rising up right now in the mighty name of Jesus we are rising out of that slumber we are rising out of that coffin in the mighty name of Jesus that undecidedness within us amen that keeps shifting us and derailing us and causing disgrace, amen, in the mighty name of Jesus within our lives, that we are breaking that in the mighty name of Jesus. The same thing with Moses. Moses was used mightily. There were different shifts that he was moved into, amen, in the mighty name of Jesus, different shifts that he moved on. But the Bible says that when he was the last part, amen, that the people started to anger him, that instead of speaking to the rock, he hit the rock. God specifically said speak to the rock but he's hit the rock out of anger out of pride in the mighty name of Jesus that it cost him to see the promised land imagine how many years he strived with these people he spoke the word of God he was a leader to his people and he himself missed 
seeing the promised land. The people that he led into, some of them even died or whatever, but he was still there and he was still shifting them into a new dimension. But he himself mixed the greatest thing that they were being led into. Amen. May we not be stuck in, in our Red Sea experiences that we miss the promised land in the mighty name of Jesus. And again, when we go into Saul, where God told him straight, stop, don't, don't leave don't don't leave anything don't leave anything um he said leave everything don't take anything within you but the people pleasing spirit in him caused him to pick up some things and then say god i'm giving it to you as a form of worship may this not be our portion we break the spirit of people pleasingness in us that derails us from our spiritual shifts our spiritual encounter encounters with him the enemy wants to disgrace us the enemy wants to disgrace us and he will do that by distracting us he will give us something that is similar it sounds similar the bible states with the old prophet that he said i know what god has said to you he said it to me as well yeah let's go i'm in it with you but first let's come and eat let's come and drink amen in the mighty name of jesus so let us find let us let, let us just pray Amen. I finished here in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. That we will not be disgraced. Amen. That we will not be derailed by demonic shifts, by demonic suggestions, by demonic strongholds. That we will rise up and say, Lord, I am ready. I am ready. I am. I do not have the time to be stuck in low self-esteem. I don't have the time to be stuck in people-pleasing tendencies. I don't have the time for people to, to reveal who I am to myself. I don't have the time for people to come on my boat before I move. I don't have the time for people to understand me before I relate to where God is taking me. I don't have the time to, to, to conjure up all these experiences before I stand and feel I am qualified. I don't have the time to stay and say I'm full of trauma. I don't have the time to be unhealed. I don't have the time to have these old patterns of behavior keep swallowing up my vision, swallowing up my destiny. I don't have the time. I I don't care who does not know me or know me. I don't care if people don't understand me. I don't care if people can't relate to me. Lord, I am ready to go. I'm no longer going to take the suggestions of man in the mighty name of Jesus. Who comes with me? Who doesn't come with me? I am going to deliver the word. I am going to be where God is taking me. I am going to birth out that thing. I'm going to do what God said in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm not going to be an emotional person that stands there that one day I'm fearful, the other day I'm, I'm full of faith. One day I'm ready. Another day I'm waiting for a time. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Bible says that he is waiting for the remnant to rise up. This is not the time to stand and be congratulated. Sarah Jakes, what has God put into your spirit? What has God put into your soul? We are ready in that shifting time. What has God given unto you? The greatest mantle that was given unto us was the salvation. Amen. And that salvation was given to us. And so what do, are we waiting for what are we waiting for to say yes lord i'm going all the way with you in the mighty name of jesus we are breaking these shifts in the, the breaking these demonic shifts these demonic shifts these this these, these shifts that derail us from the shift that we are really walking and encountering ourselves in, in the mighty name of jesus in jesus mighty name amen so let's pray in Jesus' mighty name. Father, in the Amen. mighty name of Jesus, my Father, we mighty come against God. my Father every my morning father, shift. Every single thing, my God, that has derailed, that has placed us off the track, my Father, God, in all that, my God, I have to go into a different direction because when you are taken out, my Father, I just say that we are not going to fight in the mighty name of Jesus. We are going to fight in the mighty name of Jesus. We are going to fight in the mighty name of Jesus. We are going to fight in the mighty name of Jesus. We are going to fight in the mighty name of Jesus. We are going to fight in the mighty name of Jesus. We are going to fight in the mighty name of Jesus. We are going to fight in the mighty name of Jesus. We are going to fight in the mighty name of Jesus. We refuse our oh Lord, Lord my Father, to be derailed, to be misled, to be my Father, God, 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 God,
that God may not be good. The SMS of the God may even seem like it should be my father God. It's not from you, my father God. We don't want it in the name of Jesus, my father. And when the struggle comes forth, my father God, and the feeling of pain, my father God, will be my carrier, my father God. And I'm not as we able to deserve, my father God, that we are in need of no carrier, but we're just in need of a work for you. And we to be able to move and step forward and to shift my father. And that we don't need to move upon now. We don't need my father God to stop when my father God to be able to my father God to shift my things, my God. In order for us to step my father, for us to be able to do that, to be able to be led by you and by your will and will, my father, because you are enough, you are enough. My God, your word is enough, my father. For the minute is so vain, my father, God, we are fully by your word, because that is enough in itself, my father, in the mighty name of Jesus. My God, if there's anything. I'm 
Jesus name. So we are now going to just come into our closing prayer. Um, so if anyone has a prayer point before we leave, amen. Please do come off mute. <clears throat> In Jesus mighty name, or we can write it down before we close because we're coming to a close now. <clears throat> there was a lot said and a lot prayed into. So there's any prayer point that you have that we can all come together and let it be known in Jesus' name. You can send a direct message to Nikki or any of us and if you don't want it to be on the platform. Give it about one minute. <laughs> Okay, a prayer point came in from Didi that we will not just speak about the armor but use them spiritually. Amen. Amen. So we can pray on that together. That Father Lord in Jesus' mighty name, that we will not speak about the armor, but we will use the armor of God spiritually. So important. Um Yes, we do need them for the show. We definitely do. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so let us pray. We're praying that we that 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 you know the Holy Spirit will have that remind us that will help us um, to not only just speak about the armor but to use it spiritually. Um, if anyone's able to find the scripture where um, in the word it speaks about the armor. Um, please share it if possible as we go into this prayer point in Jesus mighty name feel free to come off mute um, let us pray in Jesus mighty name Father Lord we thank you we thank you we thank you we thank you for this prayer meeting this morning we thank you that you have brought us together Father Lord we thank you that you've opened up our eyes Father Lord and our mind and our hearts to the word that you have spoken Father Lord through us Father Lord we lift up Father Lord 
as Didier said, we lift up, Father Lord, our word, our voices, Father Lord, and ask of you to help us, Father Lord, to not only just speak about the armor, Father Lord, the spiritual armor, the armor. Amen. Mighty God. Jesus. My Father, oh God. I very profoundly in your word, my Father God, that we are, my Father God, to place upon ourselves, my Father God, the armor of God, my Father. And we know, my Father God, that many of us, my Father God, may look dressed, but we're not dressed, my Father. But some of us may put on some and we don't put it on completely. Many battles are lost, my Father God, because we're not fully dressed. We're not fully equipped, my Father God, with the armor. Father God, there's no way to be battles, my Father God, without the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. There ain't no way, my Father God, battles can be fully won, my Father. If we run into battles, my Father God, without our helmet, my Father. Many people are there, my Father God. Fighting battles, my God, with their hands. My God, you cannot defeat something spiritually, naturally. There ain't no way, my God, something can be defeated spiritually, naturally. It has to be defeated spiritually, my Father God. So my Father God, hands, my Father God, come and my God, cannot defeat something that is spiritual. So my Father God, let there be an equipping in the realm of the spirit, my Father. Let helmets, my Father God, not be loose, but let helmets, my God, be firmly placed and fastened, my Father, oh God, because there are too many people running into battles, my Father God, without their helmets, my God, without the helmet, my Father God, that's where their mind has been anchored, without the sword, the word, my Father God, is where they lose, because mere human words is nothing to the enemy, mere human words means nothing, my God, to when the enemy comes out. But when somebody comes at the enemy with the word of God and with the authority that is placed upon them with the word of God, my God, the enemy has to crumble, the enemy has to flee, the enemy has to go, my Father, in the name of Jesus, to let them be an awareness of the authority when carrying them with the Father God. Once they have on the full armor and everything is tightened and everything is in place. Because the matter when the arrow comes from my father God, when that armor is fully on my father God, it will have to be trapped. It will have to be able to bounce off. It will not pierce. It will not penetrate. I said there is a business in the realm of the spirit when you want to burn me with the armor of God upon a place in my father God. In the name of Jesus, we need to not just say a thing, but we need to be a thing. There's no point us knowing of a thing and not doing a thing, my father. Let us be able to put on a body place upon ourselves, my father, the armor of God, to withstand the ways of the enemy, my father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Before we move on, I'm just gonna read. I'm gonna read um this scripture. I'm gonna read Ephesians 6 13, where it says, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, 
and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lady, for that prayer. Amen. 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 Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to play this song and then um, let's just meditate that we're literally going to come to a close in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.
Jesus' mighty name, amen. Tear down every lie, set the wrong thing right. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I'm going to come into the last prayer, uh, closing prayer, amen. Thank you for all, everyone that has joined us today. <clears throat> In Jesus' mighty name, thank you for staying on to the end. We appreciate you. God bless you. Follow us for updates. And next month is our um, shift conference, <clears throat> the fifth. So just stay tuned to um, what God is going to do. Um, but yes, I'm going to just really close this prayer, this um, prayer meeting today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So much has come forth, but always just take on what God is. God has said to you. Amen. Um, Brother Lisa said in the beginning like god do a work in me do it in me amen as we've gone through the whole meeting now I've, i'm going to summarize it in these three points which is god do it in me do a work in me do it in me amen and then lord do it through me do it through me do a work through me and then third god do it for me do a work for me, in me, through me, for me, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And don't forget the key words, prepare, anchor, clutch, in Jesus' mighty name. So I don't know if, if you want to come off um, mute just to just, just um, be in agreement, amen, as we close off the prayer points, in Jesus' name, amen. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for every single word that has been spoken here today to this morning, my Father. We pray, my Father, that no word, no word will fall to the ground and come back void in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, my Father, that nothing, my Father, that has been planted within our soul, Lord, will be snatched by the enemy, my Father. We pray, my Father, that whatever has been spoken that has hit and convicted the, our souls, my Father, that, Lord, that conviction will not burn. It will not burn, Father. It will not lay waste, my Father. It will not be something, my Father, that we just see as now, oh, my father, Lord Jesus, the spirit of rebellion is in us, my father, that stomps through the words that you have given us today in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, do it in us here today, Lord, so that you can do it through us, my father, and for us in the mighty name of Jesus, my father, Lord. Lord, any error in us, my father, that is unprepared, my father, prepare us today, my father. If our legs are on the clutch, my father, Lord, where you have told us to stop, my father, if we are staring at our own lives, my father, where you have told us to pause. If we are staring into directions, my father, that is not of you, my father. Help us to have the humility, my father, to let go and to start again, my father. Give us the humility, my father, in the mighty name of Jesus, my father, to stand back, my father, for you to do it through us and for us in the mighty name of Jesus, my father. Help us to sabotage our future. Help us to sabotage our present. Help us not to sabotage where we are going, my Father. Help us not to sabotage, my Father, and uproot, my Father, the things that you have started, my Father, within us and through us. In the mighty name of Jesus, my Father, we choose to do the gain from our old man, our old nature. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we choose to disengage from anything, my Father, that is not of you, my Father. We choose to disengage from every old patterns, my Father, Lord, that we are following my father we choose to disengage from anything my father in the mighty name of jesus my father that is paralyzing us that is keeping us stagnant that is causing us to go into repeated cycles my father that is causing us to move away and derail from our own shifts in the mighty name of jesus we let go lord jesus for you to do it in us and through us in the mighty name of jesus my father lord we surrender ourselves unto you my father in the mighty name of jesus my father lord anything in us my father that is enfolding 
my father that is not of you my father anything my father that has taken root anything that we are birthing out my father that is not of you my father lord in the mighty name of jesus we give you permission to bring it to a nullification in jesus mighty name my father we bring it my father anything that will cause you disgrace anything that will cause you shame anything that will tamper with your own character of anything that will dilute our witness anything that will dilute our testimony anything that will dilute our our, our further shifts that are, are, are on our way, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we disengage, we sweep put a halt to it in the mighty name of Jesus, my Father, open up our spiritual sight to be able to see us, my Father, let the light of your revelation, my Father, come into us, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, my Father, help us to see you above all, my Father, even when things seem like they are boisterous, my Father, help us to keep our spiritual sight set on you you in Jesus' mighty name, my Father. Help us not to ship from the promise. Help us not to live for counterfeits. Help us not to settle for our comfort zone. Help us not to live in a place of resentment, my Father. Help us not to live in our in our in our own standards, in our own expectation, and in our own desires, my Father. But help us, my Father, to live unto you. Yeah. Help us to grow in you. Help us to reach up into a higher dimension in you. Help us to break the spirit of double, 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 double mindedness, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, and doubt and fear, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, my Father. Help us to step forth in faith, my Father. Help us to step forth in love. Help us to step fearlessly in you, in the mighty name of Jesus, my Father. Help us to speak what you have shown us. Help us to have the words, my Father, that do not counteract that in which you have said in Jesus' mighty name, my Father. And if we have nothing to say, my Father, just like you did, my Father, Lord. Zechariah, my father, help us to shut our mouths, put our mouth on mute, put a padlock over our mouths, my father, Lord, if we are coming to collide with the promise, with the things that you have said, if you're going to speak things against what you have said, put a padlock over our mouths, my father, help us not to speak anyhow, help us not to speak against the promise that you have for us in the mighty name of Jesus, my father, help us to lay away, my father, every dead weight in the mighty name of Jesus, my father, Help us, my Father, not to carry, my Father, things of the past, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, my Father. But let the dead be dead. My Father, help us not to step into coffins. My Father, help us not to step into places that you do not even recognize anymore, my Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, let us walk in the fullest confidence to move forward. In Jesus' mighty name, my Father, take care, my Father, of the things that we cannot take care of, my Father, as we do your work, my Father. We don't want to go into, the, go step in, my Father, one foot in and one foot out. We don't want to live a life of lukewarmness, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, my Father. We don't want our crown to be stolen from us, my Father, because of our double-mindedness, my Father, because of us looking back, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, my Father. May it not be known that we were a people that looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. May it not be known, my Father, that we look back, my Father, and we never rose up to where you have called us, my Father. May it not be known my father that we did not fulfill that we did not finish the race that you have set before us my father may it not be known my father that the old prophet my father buried us alive in the mighty name of the mighty name of may it not be known my father that the shifts that we encountered my father were short-lived my father in the mighty name of jesus my father may it not be known my father that we said yes to the things that was not of you my father and we settled my father for things that were that 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 looked like you but was not you in the mighty name of Jesus, my Father, Lord Jesus, my Father, I pray that we arise, that we that any conflict within us, my Father, that is sabotaging, my Father, us from living, my Father, a fullness in you, my Father, Lord Jesus, my Father, may today, may we say yes, my Father, may we grieve that what was old, my Father, that we can start to step fully into where you have called us, my Father, we are the remnant, we will not be left behind in the mighty name of Jesus, we will not be left behind, my Father, we may make this declaration, my Father, where we are. The Lord, yes. do it in us. The Lord Jesus, we will not be shifted out of position, my Father. Do it through us, my Father, that we can raise other leaders, other disciples, my Father, and do it for us, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, that we will be a display of your splendor in Jesus' mighty name, my Father. A glory carrier, my Father, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, my Father.
believe, my Father, Lord. My Father, we carry every word, my Father, and the things that we don't even understand. My Father, let this be a seed, my Father, that has been implanted in us, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, that as we walk through this shifting season in our life, my Father, that other people will water it in the mighty name of Jesus, my Father, that we will remain watered, that we will remain nurtured in the mighty name of Jesus, my Father. We give our ears to the right people in Jesus' mighty name, my Father, that we hold tight to your word in the mighty name of Jesus, my Father, that we will not let pride, my Father, decide for us, my Father, in the the mighty name of Jesus, my Father. So govern our ways, my Father, Lord. Govern our ways, my Father. Let no revelation light, my Father, go through every part of our soul. In the mighty name of Jesus, we will not be deceived, my Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we will not allow, allow carnality, popular voices, my Father, speak for us my father but you will speak for us in the mighty name of jesus, jesus my father even if we stand alone my father we choose to stand for you my father in the That's mighty name of jesus so there is more for us than against us my father so we are declaring that right now something has broken something yes, has Lord. broken that low self-esteem has broken in the mighty name of jesus that spirit of fear has broken its in the mighty name of Jesus, those generational curses has loosened its hold in the mighty name of Jesus. That spirit that causes us to put one foot in and one foot out has broken, is broken in the mighty name of Jesus, my father. That Thing, those words that are in us, my father, that every time we move, we become hesitant, my father. We break it loose in the mighty name of Jesus. The spirit that stands against our, obe this, our obedience to you, my father, in the mighty name of Jesus, my father, we put it under subjection over you, my father, under you, the mighty name of Jesus. So, Father, Lord, take control. We say we are a living sacrifice unto you. Why are we here if we're not living for you, Lord Jesus? So that we give ourselves, my father, and we walk in boldness, my father. My father, we pray that every part of us will be balanced in the mighty name of Jesus. Where there is an imbalance in our hormones, where there is an imbalance in ourselves, where there is an imbalance in our emotions, where there is an imbalance in our spiritual life, where there is an imbalance in our relational life, where there is an imbalance in our will, wherever there is an imbalance, my father, we declare and decree that it comes back into alignment in the mighty name of Jesus, my father. It will come back into alignment, it will work according to your will in the Hallelujah. mighty name of yes, Jesus Lord. my father so Lord Lord Jesus we just give you ourselves and we say yes, thank you Lord thank you for this word you, father. That as you prepare to go forward my father as you did for Isaiah Lord mm. once he knew that you had called him Lord father in your word it says you will pull us back into your quiver some of us, we don't need to go out straight away. God is saying, I'm going to pull you back into my quiver so that when I pull, when I pull that arrow, you will go further than where you were before. In Jesus' mighty name, where the cranker worms, where all those things started to, the locusts and all these things were trying to bury us, where they were trying to say that we don't have enough time and all these kind of things, all these things that was trying to eat us up. The Bible says very clearly that in the mighty name of Jesus, we don't need to wait as the timeline of this world says. We will go forth as we speak in Jesus' mighty name. Not only will there be a shift apparent in our own lives, Lord, but let every single person, just like Mary, Every single person that meets us, let there be a leap in, in their own spirit. Let there be a leap in their own shifting season that they will testify that we are truly of God, that we are truly sons of God, my Father. And that no one will come to us. No one will encounter us and remain the same. There will be a leap in the mighty name of Jesus, a leaping in their spirit, a burning in their spirit, whether there is a burning in their shift or whether there is a catapulting in their shift. Wherever they are, no one will remain the same. They will testify that God has shifted them into a higher realm. In Jesus' mighty name. No one Amen. left behind in Jesus' Amen. mighty name. Nobody, mm. nobody will not be the ones that are just clapping hands mm. for people. We will testify. Yes. Name, and we are part of that shift. Mm. We will say, Hallelujah. yes, Lord. Lord in yes, Jesus' Jesus. name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, no, 
Lord, we give you thanks and we give you praise Jesus. for what you have done this morning and what you will continue to do in our lives, Lord. As we leave this call, Father Lord, do not leave our presence, mm -mm. but remain in our hearts and in our minds, Father Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you all for joining us this morning. I know the meeting went over by those of you that were able to stay to the end. We really, really, really appreciate you. Thank you so much. We love you so much. And as Deva says, stay tuned. Stay mm -hmm. tuned. I've posted our social media accounts in the chat. Please take note of them. Um, keep connected with us throughout the month. You will see highlights on our social medias in the form of posters, videos, blog, and look out for Saturday, the 5th of November, our conference, our end of the year conference shift. It's gonna be a, an amazing one. So please do not miss it. Tell your friends, tell your families, come expectant. Amen. Amen. Thank, thank you all. all. Thank you all. Thank you all so much again for joining us as we come to a close. Thank you. Have a blessed day in Jesus' mighty name. We love you with the love of Jesus. Have a blessed Thank week. you, guys. God bless you. God Thank keep you. you. May His face shine upon you in all your ways and everything that you do. You are a blessing to the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Love you. Yes, this is the God bless. God bless you, guys. <laughs> bless you, darling. God bless. <laughs> Oh dear. Right. I'm on I'm a new topic. So, so I'm a bit, I'm still learning. God bless you. Love you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> love you all. God bless you, sister Bess. Bless you, Dawn. Bless you, Bess. God bless, bless everybody. Love you all. Love, love you guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>